Thunder on Boxing Talk, Anthony here. Alright, uh, I'm back, bitches. Nah, for real, um, I got a lot of videos to make, but I couldn't make anything before I made, uh, this video on that Roman Gonzalez fight. Um, I want to talk about the Jacobs Danny fight more, too, but I'm going to do that in a different way. Uh, I got something else for that. Uh, <clears throat> but, um, Or should I start? There's two, I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about the fight and then some other stuff. Uh, let's just start um, with the fight. Uh, cause I got some, some, got my live night scoring. Uh, then I got my, you know, after rewatching it a few times, uh, scoring. Uh, Compu boxes, punch sets, and Artorias. Uh, shout out Art Artorius Boxing, the uh, YouTube channel, check it out. Uh, dope uh, Film Studies. Um, and I got uh, his punch count too. Um, but his is only a uh, total. Obviously, as I broke them down into a total power and jabs, but um, yeah, let's uh <clears throat> get into the shit. Well, the first round was really not nothing to talk about. Um, I got some notes here about the fight. Uh, I've watched it so many times. I know. It like the back of my hand I know what happened in, in that fight uh, I had my man press row um, there scoring it uh, we had it different but um, I haven't talked to him uh, since I've rewatched it a few times I don't know if he has or not uh, to rescore it or whatever um, where can I put these papers scoring a couple other things I want to talk about. Oh, oh. and then the, the judges, the fucking judges. Um, I'll just hold these. Um, the first round really don't matter. We know a heart punch um, dropped Roman in round one. Uh, the, the heart punch isn't what dropped him. It is the headbutt so strong Vizai swung his head right in to fucking Roman's temple before the went, wham, first. I mean, precisely got the you know slow mos it and shows it perfectly. You know, it was the, the the fucking knockdown was from a goddamn headbutt. First of all, um, but give the round to him. Give the round to him. Um, but he didn't knock Roman down, truly. He fucking knocked him down from a head butt. Um, let's, you know, come on. That's illegal. That don't count. It's not a real knockdown, right? But, okay, whatever. Give it to him. Fuck it. Um, and at the beginning of the fight, too, uh, the commentators, Roy Jones Jr., uh, was hating on Roman so bad. Hating on Roman so bad, talking about uh, Roman shouldn't be pound for pound number one because he can't box going front and back, uh, left, right, you know, in, in any direction, right? You gotta be able to go in any direction. Uh, Roy Jones Jr. was like, well, first of all, first of all, Roman is pound for pound number one because he was well, fucking forty six and zero or some shit, uh, thirty eight knockouts. Or something, um, insane fucking record. Had fought um, and beat uh, now because uh, he beat wrong beat Sir wrong visa. But so now uh, he beat um, seventeen to eighteen B level to A plus elite level uh, fighters. 
17 to 18 of them in world title fights. <laughs> Beat every one of them through four divisions. That is why he is pound for pound number one, you stupid fuck. It's not about, well, he can't box left, he can't box right. Well, he has beaten every goddamn style he has seen and massacred it. And massacred every style he ever saw. Now, so you can box left, right, you can run all around the ring all you want. And guess what? He'll slaughter you. Alright? So, who cares what style you box in? Pound for pound is, would your style be successful in, in any weight class? And Roman proved, yeah, it's very successful it's in a lot of weight classes. Like, I, I, even me, I can be a, a, a tiny-ass guy in this division and still maul a motherfucker. If he didn't get all them headbutts, he would have knocked Sarung Vizai out 1,000%. 1,000%. I even sent my boy a, a text who was at press. I said, uh, knockout will be coming in a few rounds. This was like, you know, around three I said that. Um... Then all the, you know, more headbutts, it was just for and then cuts, I was like, oh, fuck, that changed the whole fight. Uh, but, um, because he can't go in all these different directions. Motherfucker. Alright, now, if, if you want to truly go by the definition of pound for pound, like the bet, the guy who can probably do the most and has the widest variety uh, skill set of and, and everything is at an elite level. He's an elite level fighter and probably has the most skill uh, out of every boxer in the world. Uh, the true number one pound for pound fighter uh, is probably uh, who, who's, who would be able to be successful in any division. Uh, just because he's he's amazing, uh, would be uh, Lomachenko. Uh, I think it'd probably be Lomachenko. Um, you know, so uh, you see a style basically of a cruiserweight, and it's extremely successful up there. Um, and you see everyone copying his style and being very successful, and they're not even half as good. You know, you see Kaitrov, you know, copying his. Uh, style. I mean, they, they all do it. Vazdik, because they're all coming out the same program, so they all fight like uh, Loma. The, the program did not fight like that until Loma joined the team. Loma's father changed the way the whole Ukrainian amateur team fucking trained. <laughs> that, that ain't how the Ukrainian amateur uh, team was teaching their fighters. And then all of a sudden, they all started training and fighting and imitating Lomachenko. That's what they started doing and asking him for, you know, tips and help and studying him. And, and they got his little kind of blueprint and secrets and, you know. And he his dad's still very close with the team and wants him to win and all that shit. Uh, but, um, it was only, uh, eight punches each landed in the first round anyway. So, you know. Didn't really matter, but Sarong, uh, Sarong Vizai did get the uh, knockdown, so he takes the round. But uh, but what <laughs> I know what else I'm about Roy Jones and these guys going, they can't box in every direction. You got to be able to do it all. Uh, well, he kind of can do it all actually. Um, he's boxed going backwards. He goes left. He goes in every angle you want. What do you want him to do? Go uh, backwards in big leaping mo, big leaping fucking leaps, leap to the left, big and fancy like fucking Laura and Floyd and you and you know a, a, a million other American fighters. You know, um, do do that kind of shit. No, you know, it, it, he's a. He's a, a fighter about subtlety, you know. So when he goes left, he just takes a subtle step, a subtle step to the left. You know, he don't leap to the left and like, ha! you know, he don't throw uh, uh, counter rights like this. No, he's all tucked under, you know, and he's like, 
<laughs> no, that's the difference. All right, Roy, that's the fucking difference. Learn it, you know. So that's what boxing is. You want as little movement as possible. I'm gonna, that's another thing I want to talk about, but in another video. You know, these guys doing these exaggerated movements to get out of the way of a shot. Like, it, it's so it's the worst shit ever. Like, you, you like Triple G versus Jacobs. Uh, Triple G did what you're supposed to do. You know, just little, psh, bat it down. You know, psh, bat it down. Psh, block. You know, block. You know, parry. Parry, jab, jab. You know, slip. You know, barely move, slip. Barely move, slip. You know, block. You know, parry. You know, exactly what you're supposed to do. And Jacobs is doing the complete opposite of what you're not supposed to do. Whoa! Jumping from a, a, a shot. You know, or when he gets near him. You know, so running away. You know, like darting away from him. No. It's not how you do it. It's all about subtleties. You know, um, <clears throat> I know a lot of people hate Pavekin right now. But go watch Pavekin's, like, you know, last few fights. Even his last, uh, three. And watch the, the subtleties in his style. You know? Um, uh, him, Golovkin, uh, Roman, uh, I mean, you, you know, all three of those attackers and Golovkin can box his ass off. You don't have to just attack, uh, as we've seen many times, but, um, these guys aren't about exaggerated movements, you know? You're never gonna see... You know, a Triple G uppercut is literally like this short. Wham! <laughs> wham! You know, he brings it to about here, and then wham! He can deliver all that kinetic energy, just boom! So do the judges even see it? You know, uh, in la it, <sighs> there was one time, uh, and it was on... It's in the first three rounds. It's in Precise's first three rounds one uh he he has jacobs against the ropes he hits him with an uppercut they're like uh, basically you know glove to glove and then he hurry up bams him with it but bashes him with an uppercut and at the same time while he's doing it he's positioning his head and turning it to put the back of his head towards jacobs so he can't get head butted because he's thinking he's, his head's going to go smashing up. And then he might come right back down and try headbutting him. And he's already out of the way of it. Then he goes right back to work. Boom, boom. It was so genius. You know, I was like, wow. Wow. Like, very, very smart move. You know, totally advanced shit. But very, very subtle. You know, you, you didn't... I never... You couldn't pick that up unless it was, you know, you slowed it down. Because it happened so fast. You know, um, I mean, the uppercut you picked up, but not like the, the, the extra stuff that he did with it. It's so, so subtle. Um, but because he can't go left and right and all that shit. And, uh, he gave examples like Floyd, uh, well, he didn't say Floyd, but he, you know, he, that's the last pound for pound king. And he would have said Floyd if Floyd was still fighting. So we'll, we'll just say Floyd, uh, Ward, uh, Terrence Crawford, Lomachenko. I agree with them. If you're going to pick any one of them, it's Lomachenko. No one of them has proven that they, they can box going in any direction versus a, a, a top-level fighter. You know? Uh, uh, what? Um, Terrence Crawford uh, sure couldn't, uh, sure didn't, uh, couldn't push Postal back. Not once. All he did was run. Then push Melina back. Ran around the ring. You know? Who, who is he pushing back? You know? Can he push uh, someone back his own size? The guy in his the ring almost the fucking same size as Triple G for crying out loud. But, he, and he fights at 140 and he can't push people back? Even Victor Postal? You know? Come on. Um... But yeah, he can box going in any direction. Okay, um, um, 
I've never seen him go forward versus a top level opponent in my life. And I don't want to hear Gamboa because Gamboa's a goddamn, you know, he should be really a fucking featherweight, but, you know, he's too old. And I, I can see him at 130, but he really got to tighten up. He's still got too much chubs on him. I think he can make uh, featherweight, um, honestly. Uh, but not 35 was just way too, way too big for him. Horrible, horrible fight for his team to put him in. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, anyway, um, you had Crawford. No, get the fuck out of here. Who's the other one? Um, oh, oh, we'll just go with Floyd real quick. Floyd, uh, what top level boxer he ever pushed back and I don't want to hear Shane Mosley who had to fight him coming off the juice when he was like as weak as weak possibly gets while Floyd was juiced to the gills for that fight uh so yeah no um he put it this way a fresh fighter legit fight him and Castillo in the first one couldn't push him back. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. And that was him in his, in, his, in his prime. In his fucking prime. Couldn't do it. Nope. Got pushed back by a B-level fighter. So, yeah, yeah. He ain't that good either. And Ward? Ward fighting in any direction? He can beat you backing up? How come when he was backing up the first six rounds versus seven rounds versus Kovalev, he got his fucking head knocked off? Fuck off the whole fight. Huh? How come when he was coming forward versus Kovalev, he got his head knocked the fuck off the whole fight except, and f just fouled the whole time? And referee Bird, cheating ass Bird, who was in on it 100%, I'm not saying he was the only guy, but he was. Uh, he knew about it and partook in it, uh, for sure. Um, every commission member knew it, every official knew about it. Uh, they knew what was going down. Um, but yeah, he, uh, he didn't do no good body work on the inside. All he did was kidney punch the whole time. Rabbit punch, you know. He, he got worked by Kovalev the whole fucking fight. Whole fight, he won three rounds at most. At most. Dude got toasted toasted, like, embarrassed, toasted, toasted, and, yeah, boom, you saw it happen, right, that's, he can't go forward or backwards, Roy, <laughs> or left, or right, because everything he did versus uh, Kovalev was shut the fuck down, uh, so what are you talking about, Ward, or, or Roy? And Roy, don't you realize that just because they say Ward won doesn't mean he actually won. You know that, right? Like, you think he somehow, you, what, do you think he beat Kovalev, Roy? Is that what you're telling me? You really think he beat Kovalev? Because the night of, I had my guy at the fight and you didn't think so then. You know, you thought Kovalev won. You thought Kovalev beat him. So, if he, if Kovalev beat him, how the fuck? Could Ward be one pound for pound number one? Even if it's not going on resumes and it's just going on pure talent. Ward has fucking horrible talent. Like, talent level, guys? He should be talking about Usyk. Usyk should have been in that uh, Usyk instead of Ward. You know, Lomachenko. I can understand. Um, I guess can go every direction now. Yeah, that's tough. Um, Triple G. Um, uh, if you guys will see about coming up, a Manny Pacquiao. Um, but uh, about the um, yeah, it's it's just <sighs> Roy Jones Jr. See the thing that pisses me off is Roy Jones could have said that about any pound for pound fighter for the last fucking 10 years 
You know, so as long as Floyd was pound for pound one, then to Roman, he always could have said that and never, ever fucking did. Why didn't he say it versus Floyd? Because Floyd couldn't do it all. All he did was run, 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 run in every single fight. He could only fight one way. Run. Tell him to back someone up for one round. Can't do it. Gotta run. So, you know, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, it's like he ain't pound for pound then. You know, so he always could have said this, but never did. Never said it when it was fucking Floyd Mayweather. But when it's Roman Gonzalez, who they clearly don't like, uh, because they, it's not that they don't like him, they don't respect him or care about him. Apparently he's not a big enough money earner for them, uh, because they fucked this kid so bad, um, allegedly, HBO. You know, um, team ward, <clears throat> James, you know, manager James Prince, um, maybe Kovalev and main events, but you wouldn't even need them, so why even get them involved? Uh, Ring magazine, uh, eh. and if you know, want to hold it, same commission they uh, just did just robbed Kovalev in the last fight with. They're fighting in the same commission again. Everybody on the commission knew what was what was up. You know? So, uh, or the, uh, the all, every everyone in, important in the commission knew what was happening that night. Uh, because that's just, uh, uh, I'll explain it, you know, uh, in a minute, but he always could have said uh, someone's truly not pound for pound. And why hate on Roman? This guy is doing everything in boxing right. Fighting all the best guys. Uh, you know, the number one pound for pound guy. The best record in all of boxing. Um, well, not, not like the best of all the new guys. Uh, cause man, you know, but you, uh, best record on uh, all, all, all the new guys, and we got a zero, and he's beat so many fucking fighters. It, it's uh, um, an amazing record. Um, but he's not a money maker. They've had him at pound for pound number one for a while now, and HBO's made no money off him. He wants them to pay him a lot of money. And they don't want to pay him a lot of money. And he, they were going to have to pay him a lot of money to, to for these big fights to happen. Like him uh, and a quad just rematch. Him versus Estrada. Estrada even said he wanted $1 million for the rematch. Um, so that's $2 million. And they're paying these guys a f th you know, few hundred grand. Check his purse. Probably like 400 grand or something. 300 grand. Um, I'd be surprised. I mean, they're not giving him much. Um, he's begging, begging for a million dollar payday. He was. Uh, they didn't want to give it to him and weren't giving it to him. Um, maybe they were like, hey, you know, stops us from having to give him that payday. It bumps our guy Ward up to number one, and Warden Kovalev is happening, and they knew Warden Kovalev was happening three weeks ago, because Ward started VADA testing two weeks ago, so they knew three weeks ago that, uh, and, It is April 6th, 7 o'clock, 7 p.m., um, Eastern Standard Time. And I'm telling you, they, they knew three weeks ago that this Cove Ward fight was a 100% done deal for June the 17th. Um, <clears throat> and you bump Roman out the way, just bump him the whole way back to four, and guess who's number one and two? You just move everyone else forward. <gasps> Ward moves right into pound-for-pound pound number one slot position. 
Kovalev moves into pound for pound number two slot position. So now we have a now a rematch, well, we, we, an angry rematch of pound for pound number one and number two. Truly, pound for pound number like two or three. Uh, well, like three verse pound for pound. 20. <laughs> That's the truth. Roman still won. Triple G's too. No, that's the way I got it anyway. <clears throat> so, you know. Uh, Kovalev's three. Uh, obviously. You know. Um, Manny's four. Um, and, uh, number five, 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 number five, number five. Who's my number five? Um, Number five. I know I got number five. Roman, Manny, Triple G. Couple of glove. No, that is my five. Durr. Durr. Anyway. Uh... Roy Jones didn't even mention Triple G as potential um, um, pound for pound guys. Triple G proved he can do it all. You know, put on the. We just saw you know, what Lemieux did, uh, you know, versus Stevens, and we saw what Triple G did to Lemieux. You know, and boxed his ears off and no one else could ever uh, ever did that to him <clears throat> he was beat before but no one ever treated him like box his ears off like that at all uh, that's pretty damn impressive high level boxing ability look what he did to Danny Jacobs elite level defense elite level defense elite level offense he just didn't throw a lot he just didn't throw a lot you know, it was like he was just doing enough to win rounds, bank the rounds, and uh, beat up Danny a little bit, make sure he banked the rounds. It was like that's all he was doing. You know, like I swear that I, I think he had to carry the motherfucker. I think it was part of their deal. Like, we'll, we'll only take the fight if you don't knock out our guy. We need him to still be kind of marketable. You know, and maybe, you know, rematch. They probably didn't want to do it. It was probably the only way the fight was going to happen. Or they'd uh, get get stalled and stalled out and bogged down for months. Like I told you before, um, WBA wouldn't order no purse bid. They refused up once already. Um, the, he Golovkin couldn't fight no one else. Or they'd take his WBA world super title. Um, and they would just keep given Danny uh, negotiation time and that's you know a couple months at a time <laughs> so you know, another four months down the drain and then if you f do finally come to some agreement after that which probably you wouldn't if you didn't want to carry him he'll probably just vacate his belt and say fuck you and now you just lost a whole entire year and don't even get the Danny Jacobs fight you know, or you can take the Jacobs fight, but you got to carry him, you know. Maybe that's why he was only hitting him with a lot of jabs and staying away from the body, you know, because he didn't know if a big hook, how good he could take it, you know, because uh, uh, in Big Bear he was sparring a ton of light heavyweights, cruiserweights, and heavyweights, and ripping their bodies to pieces, broke the, broke the ribs of a heavyweight. And sent him packing. Uh, heavyweight. And sparring. In sparring gear. Sparring. Um, so it's not that he couldn't. You know, either he didn't feel it that night and didn't have the energy um, to, to, to box. But he's always ready to go. And look at how he punches. Most of the time, he's not angry when he punches. This is what was weird to me. He wasn't angry when he was punching Danny. It was more just like, bam, you know, put some oomph into it. Normally when he jabs, he's like, ah, 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 ah. like, look at 
Google image or go Google search and hit images and Google search the word uh, Gennady Golovkin punching look at every picture how angry he is unless it involves a Danny Jacobs and then he's like not so angry every punch and every other fight he has, he throws he's angry even if he'll throw a jab with anger and then just a right hook ah, angry as fuck like, ah, angry as hell every punch is even little slappy ones ah, hard to trying to put everything into him like he like you stole something from him when he was a little kid type anger you know he got this pent up anger in him and he lets it loose in the ring and he didn't let that shit loose versus uh, Jacobs and I don't know why you know, maybe because there was no need to, you know, um, Danny Jacobs did basically land nothing, as precise shows, there's a few rounds where he really only landed, like, one to two punch, one to two punches, you know, out of the first six, you know, uh, a couple rounds, two, three rounds, he only landed anywhere from, like, one to one to three punches in the entire round. Uh, that's like truthful. You know, he go watch his fucking film studies. I'm not joking. He didn't land dick. You know he got swept in first six. Swept. But that's a different fight. Um, and uh, Triple G, who like I was saying, uh, who Roy Jr. didn't mention by the way. Uh, but um. And, uh, first of all, Roy Jones is on record saying Roman Gonzalez, uh, deserves to be pound for pound number one in the world. Before, he's on record saying it many, many times. He also is on record many, many times talking about his personal pound for pound list and how he's always had Loma, like, number one and two. And once he, you know, beat Rocky Martinez and Walters, psh, he had him at number one immediately um, on his personal pound for pound. But as like the media goes and how they create theirs, he always understood like yeah the way I'm I'm going by a different criteria here, you know. But the the criteria you guys are going by, yeah, Roman is number one, you know. So why did he hate on him so bad at the very beginning of the fight? You know, very beginning of the fight, man. Fucking, just fucking ridiculous. Just, just ridiculous. Um, but round two. Um, uh, round two. Oh, yeah, I remember round two. Um, Ron Vizier comes out throwing a lot of shots. Can't land shit. Um, it's probably the first minute and a half. Um, he throws a bunch of punches, misses a fucking sixty shots. Honestly, honestly, he missed like everything he threw, and Roman's tagging him the fuck up. Uh, Roman. Outlanded him fucking almost two to one. Twenty two to fifteen. Uh <clears throat> almost two to one uh in that round. Then in the second half, um after a rung visa kinda you know did his whole thing uh, for about 10 maybe 10 seconds uh, Sarong Bize went nuts and landed through and landed uh, some some uh, power shots probably 5 uh, probably 5 of them Four or five of them uh, on Roman. 
And then Roman got pissed and started firing back. And <laughs> that's when he whooped Rung V's eyes ass that round and hurt him bad. Hurt him. Um, hurt him for the entire rest of the round, too. Almost, almost stopped him. Had him hurt for the whole rest of the round, too. Um, so, obviously, he gets round two. Alright. He completely outboxed you in the, the first half and made a fool of you. In the second half, he murdered you and had you hurt the whole entire second half. Alright. And you did nothing ever. Nothing ever. Uh, Alright. Third. Turn around. I'm right. Right. Rung Vizai, he uh, started out good, you know, comes out, starts out boxing, and uh, then Roman just straight raked him with uh, three straight hands in a row. Just Roman was, start, was really kicking his ass here now. He's actually laying, just ripping shots, but he just raked them, just one. Bam! Straight right. Landed it. Again, again. Wham! Another one. Then boom, boom, bang, bang. And wham! A third one. Um, and it fucked Roman VZ up. He, the three straight right hands. Um, for sure. Uh, it was just three straight right hands in a row. And Roman VZ butted the shit out of Roman. Roy Jones Jr. even brought up how wrong Vizier was fucking hurt. Okay. Um, and after the butt, uh, Roman fought like a madman, like the devil for the rest of the fucking round. Um, and just whoop dude's ass. Yeah. I landed him. Uh, <laughs> over. More than three to one. More than three to one. Yeah, I landed him. Uh, but this is a sign here. You know, first of all, this guy came to do nothing but cheat, and I think he was told he would be allowed to cheat, and the cheats to you to use headbutts and low blows. Use headbutts and low blows. You know. Uh, we can let you get away with headbutts and low blows. Um, his main tool, though, headbutts. Boy, was he good with them fucking butts. Uh, whoever scouted this guy, I mean, I know he, he had to fight him, and he never butts like this. He's not a butter like this uh, in, in his other fights. He did it for this fight. You know, it was ridiculous. He... he he does headbutt occasionally in other fights. He's, I've seen him headbutt before, but never, nothing like this. This was just crazy, I insane. He was nonstop fucking headbutting, nonstop. Um, there was probably 50 fucking headbutts that the ref didn't even acknowledge, but we'll get to that. Um, anyway, with the rounds, uh, he gets fucking sh just strafed by three right hands. And then butts the fuck out of Roman. Gets the shit whooped out of him for it. And loses the round. Then goes into a round. So so round three. Alright. You can't say he dare won. I mean, because he got massacred in the, the, you know, before the butt. And after the butt, he got destroyed. And he got outlanded more than three to one. And he got hurt, by the way, in the round. He got hurt in basically every single round um, from 2 to 9, uh, 2 to 8. Um, every single round he got hurt in. You know, Roman was landing the far, far, far more effective shots. Um, you be, Look at all that blood. The blood was from butts. Not one single cut was caused from a punch. Um, a punch may have made it bigger, 
but the, a butt caused it, an intentional butt. They were all intentional. In the very first round with the knockdown, that was cl clearly intentional. In the second round, he, he tried it, it was clearly intentional, tried it a couple times, and did butt him a couple times in the second round, intentional. And ref didn't call it. Uh, third round, extremely intentional. Uh, but whatever. Round four. But that's two and three now that went to Roman. That evens it back up. Um, round four, I remember this one. Uh, Roman starts off real good. Uh, starts off real good. Starts off winning. And uh, then the uh, ref warns Romavizai for the use of his head. Because he butted Roman again. Roman comes right out, starts whooping him up, butt, headbutt. Every time he started to get fucked up, he butted, okay? That's the, that's just what happened. That's the fight, okay? Every time Rung B's eye started to get fucked up, he butted. And he got fucked up in basically every round, so he butted in basically every round, okay? I some, <laughs> most, a lot of times, well, not a lot of times, every time, more than once around, um, but just one really, really bad one around, um, but yeah, I mean, he starts getting fucked up, and, uh, bam, headbutt, he gets a warning, a warning, that's all, just a warning, just a warning, you know, ref warns him for the use of his head, you know, <laughs> It's fucking a joke, man. Oh, I took a point. One point. And Marcus Marcus of Queensbury rules. The Marquis Marcus Marcus of Queensbury rules. Marcus of Queensbury rules state that if a man commits an intentional foul that results in an, that results in an injury he is automatically to be deducted. The ref is to order all the judges to deduct two points from him in that for that round to even it out. Because, hey, I just got cut, so now you got to take two points. That's the rules of boxing. The rules. All right, that is in the rules. So they never follow it, though. They try to pretend it's not a rule. Uh, that's a rule, motherfuckers. Um, we'll look up the rules of... Look up Marcus Queensberry rules. Right there. I'm actually going to be doing a video on that, actually. Um, not on that, but on something else. And something, I'll be talking about that, but... Yeah, it's right in the rules. Look it up. You know? It's like in pro boxing rules. Uh, boxer. They have the, a whole... Just one page, whole list, right there. Every rule. Um, it's or just what the Marcus of Queensbury rules are for, and it's it, when you read them, you just see exactly what the sport was designed to be, and this ain't what it was designed to be, you know, <clears throat> not at all. But anyway, um, he, he gets warned for the the use of his head. Um, and Rung Vise uh, rallies. With, there's, about a, there's about one minute left. He starts a little shitty rally for about five to ten seconds and then Roman rallies for the entire rest of the round straight beating the fuck out of him. Uh, round four he uh Four, he, two to one them, and landed more than twenty shots. He landed twenty shots more, and two to one them. For every one punch, Sarong Vize landed. No, Roman landed two, and he landed uh, twenty more. Uh, they won the war, but he landed fucking forty to twenty. Roman, Roman landed forty. To 
Strong V's eyes, 20. He got whooped that round. Fucking whooped. So it's pretty clear who wins that round, right? Okay, that's four rounds now. Now Roman's ahead. Because you had the 10 8, he's down two. All right, then you got, you know, round uh, two, round three. We probably won those rounds, right? Uh, clear as day. I talked about it. That was a joke. It's easy, easy rounds to score. Um, that got him out of the hole. Now he just won round four. That puts him up. Or that puts him up now. Now he is ahead. Uh, round five. Oh, yeah. I'm on. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He, he murdered him this round. Uh, for, for round five. Uh, first minute and a half, uh, Roman put a good old fashioned, passionate ass whooping on Sarong, Sarong Vizai. Just beat the fuck out of him and hurt him bad with a minute, right in the middle of the round, a minute and a half left. Um, and what did Roman do in the last, uh, you know, but then have the last minute, the, the second half of the round. <laughs> Hurt Rung Vizai again. And then whoop the hell out of him worse than he did in the first half of the round. Outlanded that motherfucker uh, four to one. Four to one beat the fuck out of them in that round. So there's no debating who won round five. None. Okay? So now Roman's up two points. Okay? <laughs> Listen. Compared to Roman up till like now, like at this point in the fight right here, like uh, going into the sixth round in the fight, only Rung Vizai's size was keeping him in the fight. He had horrid defense. He had no defense. None. None. No accuracy. No combination. Terrible footwork. Uh, I mean, it, just that much bigger man in that little tiny man hurts you constantly and you never hurt him once except when you headbutted him you headbutted him and may have hurt him um, may have been made up to see stars from being headbutted in the temple uh, but he came back and beat the fuck out of you outside of that I mean strong, he had size and you know that whole thing going for him, you know, he had the, the size, uh, ability, you know, not ability, but attribute going for him. He was a lot bigger. He could absorb uh, some of Roman's punches a little better. Even though if he didn't headbutt, he would have gotten knocked the fuck out. Hundred percent, not a doubt in my mind. This guy was getting massacred. I mean, just listen. Uh, Round two, two to, two to one. Round three, uh, three to one, over three to one. Round four, uh, two to one. Um, round five, uh, <laughs> four to one. Uh, round six, three to one. I mean, it, it, and these aren't, like, just, like, three punches to nine punches. These are like 10 to 38. Um, 11 to, you know, 40. Um, 20 and... or 11 and 23. And Roman always has the higher one, of course. I mean, he's slaughtering this guy. Hurts him in every round, fucking round. Every fucking round. From two to eight, he hurts him. But 
motherfucker gets, you know, a, a butt happens every single time. Miraculously, it just accidentally happens every time I get hurt. Wow. How, how, how just amazing and beneficial for me that these accidental headbutts occur every time I get hurt. Yeah, every single time I'm hurt, an accidental headbutt occurs, and I never get cut either. Isn't that great? Like, get the fuck out of here. You know, but, uh, Roman, Roman, uh, at this stage in the fight, going into the sixth round, uh, what I've written down here was, um, how on point his defense was. His accuracy, uh, his body work, and his, his footwork was just incredible. Uh, oh, yeah. But his combinations, his, his combinations, you know. Um, just there's a ton of b fucking blood from the cuts. Um, in the last few rounds that fucked with him, that cost him a couple of rounds. Um, the angles he used in this, the power, the power shots. My God, look how small he was, and how many times, and how bad he hurt Rung Vizai. It, you know, if Rung Vizai was a fucking man, and, uh, you know, it, if he was a fucking man, he would have got knocked the fuck out. But he kept cheating and headbutting and survived. But if he just boxed, he was out of there. Fucking out of there. He couldn't do shit to fucking Roman. And Roman was just getting cooking. You know, he was going to break this guy in half. Uh, which was going to be a tremendous win. And then they go and fucking rob him. All all for money and monetary purposes, which I will get into in another video. Um, I'll tell you this. Why, put it this way. Why was Roman Gonzalez robbed? Well, it all started when Kovalev was robbed versus Andre Ward. Uh, so you probably you should know like the parties involved. You know, I already said before, you know. Down the line from HBO to Rock Nation, James Prince and uh, Ward, uh, you know, the HBO people, um, Ring Magazine people, but you don't even really need Ring in there, but you might want to throw out Oscar a few dollars, he'll do something. Uh, allegedly, allegedly, all this. Um, and you can make more money off those fights. They have the pound for pound super number one superstar, but he's not. They can't put him on pay per view. They couldn't put Roman on pay per view, no matter who he fought. They wanted to be able to put someone on pay per view, who was uh, or the number one pound for pound number one guy, because they're used to them pay per views where pound the pound for pound number one guy brings in a lot of money. And I think they're going to try to create Ward as this new Floyd Mayweather character, uh, which is going to be fucking funny if they do. Uh, oh, God. If they do. Oh, my God. Boxing guns has gone to fucking hell in a handbasket. Uh, however, he... He, he's going to be vacating a lot of belts. Because, <laughs> uh, nah, Breedish just won his fight. I'll talk about that in another video. Um, uh, watched it, scored it. Thought Huck put on a disgraceful performance. Um, now you got Beater Beave, who Barrera ducked like a bitch. Uh, but, I mean, he'll be fighting Ward. That'll be one of his mandos. Uh... He, they, they're coming from all ends. He's gonna have to fight Salomov. I mean, he, he's he's just swarmed. He's swarmed. We gotta fight Kovalev. He's swarmed. Uh, hey, Adonis, my God, you guys fucking swarmed. Um, but what I wrote down here about going in round six was that um, all three official judges had it. Uh, a damn draw 
47-47. Uh, as I just showed you the scores, 48-48-46. Roman only lost the first round. He's won every round since, going into the sixth. It's clear as day. He's at least two to one them in every round. Two to round them, three to one, two to one them, or I mean two to one them uh, uh, in, in every round or more. He two to one them in some rounds, three to one them in some rounds, four to round them in one round. Uh, he's just schooling shit out, fucking Sarong Vise, whooping his ass and hurting him in the process. Not only outlanding him at a tremendously high rate, but also hurting him and hurting him fucking bad and then getting butted for it several times already been butted several times the knockdown just acknowledge headbutts the knockdown well they didn't acknowledge it but we all seen it uh the butt when he got hurt uh the butt for the with the warning um that's three butts going into the sixth round that were acknowledged. He got butted like six more times bad that weren't acknowledged. And obvious is all hell. They just weren't acknowledged. Uh, they just, because they, they weren't pulled off as fancy to where they fucked Roman all up, you know. Because Roman was pr very wary of getting headbutted again. But the guy was fucking good. Um... <clears throat> you know, he was real good. I have a couple of times here written down just to show you. Go back like, and you can watch. And the ref didn't say a word when he's standing right between the two fighters with the best view in the house. Sees it happen. Doesn't call in it. Doesn't call it. And it was the most intentional headbutt you ever saw in your life. And that happened several times. Um, but I'll give you the times here in a minute. Um, round six, though. Um, all officials have a fucking draw. What? A draw. Roman's winning. Okay, he just went up. Um, now, uh, round six. That's what it was, round six. Oh, yeah, okay. I remember this one. <clears throat> round six. <laughs> uh, for the first, uh, I'd say probably 30 seconds or so, uh, Roman comes out and is just fucking wrecking Rung Vizai. Wrecking him. Just fucking wrecking him. And what do you think happens? A goddamn headbutt. A goddamn headbutt. What do you think happens? A headbutt. A clearly intentional headbutt. And Slow Mo has fucking proved that when Rung Vise uh, threw that left, threw the left, uh, he threw that uh, punch a foot away from, he, like, he threw that punch out there a foot away from Roman. And then whips his fucking head right into Roman Gonzalez. Alright. Whips it into fucking, he goes like, wham! Smashes in that way up here is hitting you right, you know, right here. Right, right here. You know, all that meat. Fuck you all up. Um, and bam! As soon as he gets hurt, headbutt. But he hurt him. Beat the fuck out of him too for the first thirty seconds. Anyway, uh, clearly intentional headbutt. Should have had another point taken. He should have been DQ'd, in my opinion. Um, at that point, at that very point, DQ'd. Um, but uh, at minimum, take another point away. Does it again? Any? Uh, anything with his head again he's DQ'd but I DQ him right there um, you're clearly intentionally losing using your head you're trying to end a man's career you just can't this guy has children you know 
Uh, you know how bad all these cuts around his eyes are going to affect him in future fights now? You know, easy they can break open. Maybe he can lose the fight that if he would have won, would have gave him his million dollar payday. You know, but, you, you know, the, the power power the powers that be already fucked him out of his million dollar payday. Uh, they killed two birds, two birds with one stone. Got a, you know, bigger money fight. Um, out of Ward and Kovalev. Now it's pound for pound one and two, so the winner is definitely going to be pound for pound number one. Um, so it, now it really is for pound for pound number one status, huh? Uh, to some people, I guess, whatever. You, know, you got to watch the fight, but... Uh, it just all works out so beautifully for HBO, huh? And Ward, and I mean, just, you know, it's a joke. All bad for Roman, though, which I'll get to. Um, but uh, let me hurry this up. Uh, I, he, he, clearly, he fucking whips his head right into Roman, man. It's clear as day. So, any, I'm tired of you fucking noobs. We, I've seen some videos. I'm tired of you fucking noobs uh, who don't know shit about fucking boxing. Um, saying the butts were not intentional, that they were all, they were accidental. Like, please just shut up and say you don't like Roma Gonzalez. Just say that, rather than, them butts were not intentional. Otherwise, now I look at you as, if you just say I don't like Roman, I'm like, alright, hey, cool, you just don't like Roman, you say fuck him then. But when you try to cover that up by saying, no, nah, them butts were intentional, them butts were, you know, legit, uh, they, they, they weren't in, uh, intentional, well, then, not only do I know you don't like Roman, but you also, maybe, well, you maybe don't like Roman, but, probably don't, but, probably don't know shit about boxing either. And that's the sad part. Probably, you probably can't even tell when a fucking headbutt, if you can't tell when a headbutt is intentional or unintentional, I mean, you couldn't see the, when a guy gets hurt three times and three times in a row he headbutts the, his opponent, uh, and then does it all fight long every time he's getting hurt, I think a pattern emerges. And if you can't, like, you know, pick that pattern out of the fight, and you know, see all that. Uh, it's more than you, more than you can't just understand boxing. It's that you are fucking brain dead. You are brain dead if you can't pick that pattern out of the fucking fight. However, he gets spanked, rung VJ in the first, you know, like whatever, thirty seconds, forty seconds from, and fucking headbutts him. Uh, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. Uh, the ref called a time. Steve Willis, you know, I, I always liked Steve Willis, too. I always did. I always did. He was a real cool guy, real nice guy. I, I met him before. Um, but he was in on it. He was in on this. So, like, fuck Steve Willis, you know? It's like, I get it. It's like, you're either going to be in on it or you're not going to be in on it. And you might as well be in on it almost because if you're not in on it, you're probably not going to get many calls. And that's how he makes, you know, a livelihood. You know, so, hey, you know, so they're just going to bring someone else in who will do it anyway. You know, so I almost understand, but I st you, you still got to have some principles, man. You got to be like, nope, nope will not do it. Or at least the headbutts be like, hey, you guys do whatever you do outside the ring, but I'm calling. I'm doing my job. You know, uh, I won't say shit, but I'm doing my job. Tell your guy to fight clean. That way Roman could have knocked him the fuck out. But he didn't even do that. He didn't even do his job because he knew what was on the line and what was supposed to happen that night. Clear as day. You know, make an, an American, an ex-Olympian, 
pound for pound number one. It took the two biggest robberies uh, 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 of the last, what, 12 months, you know, really the last two biggest robberies of the last two years, you know, what, what two, uh, two biggest robberies of goddamn forever, you know, two of the biggest robberies of all time in the last less than 12 months, you know, it's what, seven months uh, away uh, since Kovalev Ward 1 till now, right? It took the two biggest robberies in, what, a seventh, a seven-month span? The Kovalev Ward robbery, the Roman uh, Sarong Vizai robbery, and that got Ward pound for pound number one status. That's how Ward got his pound for pound number one status by two of the worst robberies you've ever seen. And we know who, were, who was involved in the first one. And I definitely, uh, from what I understand, I did, they were involved in the second one too. And so was HBO for money reasons. They were okay with it. You know, they probably passed word on to the commission. Commission was cool with it. You know, commission just does what they want. I mean, commission commissioners are dumb as they're dumb as shit. Okay, not the commissioner in all the states, but they have a bunch of commission. You know, commissioners. There's you know, New York State Athletic Commissioner is not the commissioner. You know, but little guys that work in the commission that go to the fights, and they're dumb as dirt. All right, the guys you know check everything out. Oh, they're, they're, they're all dumb as hell, dude. I've talked to them before. Um, not very intelligent men. They're kind of like the, 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 you know, your sister calls you up and says, man, my son's just so stupid. He can't get a job anywhere. Uh, hey, let me make a call for you. And you make a call. And, you know, they're like political family and he, they get him a job as a fucking commissioner. A New York State Athletic Commissioner. You know, the governor appoints the, all these people. So, whatever the governor says goes. If someone makes, if someone can reach the governor, um, which a lot of people can, and some, especially some of these states, reach the governor, put in a call, say, "Hey, we want these names as our ref and our judges. Put them. Uh, tell your state athletic commission." to give us these people. We'd never know about it, and the commission would just do it, and you'd think that they picked them randomly somehow. No, not at all. You know? They are completely picked way long before that. You know? And they were talked to about how they were going to score the fight a month uh, before the, they even announced who they were going to pick. You know what I mean? Like, right now. <laughs> like, it's how shit's done. Okay. Uh, but, anyway. Um. <sighs> Willis, uh, called a time for that headbutt. But he didn't even take a point away. He did not take a point away. Again! He called a time, but didn't take a point away like he should have. Um, but for uh, 30 seconds before the butt, Roman was killing the motherfucker, giving him a lesson on hit and not get hit while being in position to hit again and hitting again and hitting again. You know, because he was hitting him like a motherfucker. And then gets whapped right in front of fucking Willis. He sees it clear as day. Saw how intentional it was. And didn't even fucking take a point away. Unbelievable. An unintentional butt doesn't get you a point taken away. Boxing rules state it take You get two points taken away for uh, if it causes an injury. You know? Which it did. So, fuck him. You know, dude caused many... He caused, what, four injuries? Uh, 
three injuries with headbutts? That's six points. You know? Did he win now, motherfuckers? Idiots? No, he didn't. Did he? And yes, they were extremely intentional. Don't dare debate me because I would go slow mo fucking record every one of them and post it on my channel. Because uh, yes, I can do that film study shit now. Um, ever since I was fucking with that uh, one of programs I was telling you guys a while back, uh, I can do it now. Um, I still be messing with it. But, uh, you know. <sighs> Willis really should have took a point, and it's how I know he wasn't, how, how I know he was in the tank, I'm sorry, or the take, the tank, how I know he was on the take, um, because he had the best point of view in the house, and he called a time because he saw how vicious it was. Because he, he clearly saw it. He, I mean, you know, it was either pretend that didn't happen or call a time and then do what? And then he just does nothing and uh, all right, box. Like, what? Motherfucker, did, did you just see this? He just intentionally headbutted him. You're going to allow that in your ring? Like, do you know what? Do you know the kind of respect that Sarung Vizai is showing Steve Willis when he's doing that? That is showing a referee zero respect. When you foul uh, your opponent in a, in, in a ring, you are di not only disrespecting you know, your gym, um, unless you have to foul, but if you're fouling first and being like an asshole about it, you're not only disrespecting yourself, your gym, uh, your coach, unless he's telling you to because he, he's a piece of trash. Uh, and it's part of your game plan or something, then you're all pieces of trash. But but if you're a true fighter and you're fouling, you know, you're, you're, you're really, really shaming, like I said, you, your coach, your gym, you know, everything, your win. It's unbelievable. You can't do it. You, know, you, you cannot do that kind of shit. Um, And when Willis already knew this guy, had already headbutted him several times. I'm not saying like three, I'm talking like nine. And Willis saw basically every single one of them, uh, but only acknowledged a few uh, previous. So he knows this guy is using his head all night, just intentionally whipped it into Roman's head and smashed Roman with it calls a time and doesn't take a point. He doesn't take a point from this guy who just definitely, definitely threw an, an intentional headbutt and got caught. Um, doesn't take a point away after he's already been caught throwing several other intentional headbutts and you watched him but didn't say any, anything say and land a few other intentional Headbutts. Hmm. H how does Roman, who's what, 5'4? He's 5'4, four, four, right? And uh, I know Sarong Visa ain't that tall. Uh, yeah, let's go check this out. Let's see how it's looking. I don't think he's much taller. I just want to make sure, though. I don't think it uh, matters. Oh, Romans five three. So was his opponent. He's the same height. Uh, I actually. That's bullshit. I don't think they were the same. I don't think they are the same height. They didn't look the same height to me. Uh, Sarong Sor I definitely looked taller to me. I think he lies there. Because um, I thought it was pretty impressive 
how Roman, we know how Roman fights, high, he gets in the nice, like, high guard, tight guard, you know, uh, you know, traditional stance, crouches real low, you know, head tucked, shoulder tucked into the, chin tucked into the shoulder, and this motherfucker was getting lower than Roman, and everything else on him was bigger than Roman, he, he, I mean, I think he was a little taller than Roman, I think he looked about 5'5 five, five to me, um, it's like Holyfield, how the fuck does Holyfield get his head under Tyson when he's fucking five inches taller than Mike Tyson, you know, if, if not more, because people say Tyson is exaggerated, he's not even 5'10", he's really 5'9", yeah, that's the case, well, then, you no. Know. Ten, eleven, four inches, four inches, you know, dur, but, you know, he's definitely three inches taller, but he's probably closer to three, four inches taller, but he kept getting his head under Tyson's, who also fights low and crouches and makes himself even shorter. And Holyfield don't fight like that. Holyfield fights upright, boom, boom, like hands out like foam and then, you know, you know, throws them like bat, 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 whipping them. Um, but Wong Gek was sure getting his head under there every time. He was making sure, well, he tried. He didn't do it every time. He tried, though, a lot, a lot. Um, all three judges gave um, that last round to Rung Visa, I believe. Also, by the way, what round was it? Round round six, and he outlanded him more than three to one. Roma Gonzalez landed three to every one. Of Sarong Vizai's punches. Where's the fucking judge thing? Did I fucking throw it away? You gotta be kidding me. I thought it'd be useless. Oh my god. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> I got it here. I got it. Uh. Wait. Round six. I think they actually gave it to him because it was so just devastating. Yeah, it was, yeah. I'm thinking of a different round. Some one judge didn't give him round four though, and two of the judges didn't give him round two. That's just ridiculous, insane. That's insanity to me. Um, keep that with me here, really. but there's some other funny shit in there with these judges that I'll talk about. Um, but I want to talk about this for a second. Uh, back to the fight real quick, though, first. Um, Roy Jones brought up uh, how Roman had just hurt Roman's eye with a body shot and a hard two-punch combo upstairs also that he didn't mention. He didn't mention it, but the, I don't know if... I think he... Th he acted like it was more just the body punch that did it, but it was the hard whack, whack, with then the body shot. I don't know if the head and the body were, he was hurt in both places, or maybe it might have even been the head, but he was fucked up. But Roy didn't say nothing about the two-piece. Um, but, yeah, he got two-piece bad. Um, and, uh, Right after uh, the two punch combo upstairs, and the, he's punched in the belly, he's hurt. Roy Jones talking about how he's hurt, and how lucky he was that Willis called a timeout. Hmm, worked out, huh? Afterwards, they went to war. They went to war, you know. Um, hey, uh,. Roman proved his dominance, took over big for about 30 seconds uh, into the, going, going into the last minute, or the last minute, 
Um, I mean, after already kind of putting on a you know boxing lesson, um, and uh, yeah, for actually no, for the last minute. The last minute of that round, he put on a brutal, brutal clinic on Rung Vizai. And even hurt Rung Vizai a couple of times in um, round six. And, 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 <laughs> but once really bad with a nasty, nasty left to the liver. Um, he was wobbling, he was fucking <laughs> eating some vicious shots. <laughs> Looked like he might go. Looked like he might go. Uh, don't even, it really looked like he might go. Um, another ref might have been thinking about stopping it, but Willis couldn't, because he had to hope wrong I could survive. But if Roman just had a little more time, he'd probably have to go, I'm the fuck out of there, because he was ready to go. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's like, Roman was just murdering dude, um, and it even, like, even though Willis couldn't stop the fight, you know, like it, he had to make sure it went on so bad. It, you go if you watch it. It looks like he's thinking of stop jumping in and stopping it a couple times there. Like um, he's getting ready. You know, getting in stance to as soon as that lasts. As soon as he goes limp, boom! I can jump in and stop it. You know, that's what he looked like. Um, that's that's fucking for real. Uh, but. Yeah, he didn't though. Uh, his uh, his brains got the better of him, and he did not stop the fight. Which he he should have stopped it. He should have. He should have said, "Fuck you, wrong visa. You lost. KO, you're out of here." Um, <clears throat> but uh, hey, you know um, <laughs> it's crazy, man. In the last forty seconds of that round. I remember this wrong. Vizai was out on his feet damn near. And what the fuck happens next? Blow! The most blatant headbutt of all. Barely even threw a, a, a body shot now. Now he's just whipping his head. He was at least, you know... Uh, he, he He's not even throwing punches anymore. You know... Back in the day, you know, we grew up with Holyfield. I, 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 you know, Hopkins, every time they throw a punch, they throw it out here. They go, whoa, and dive in like this. Because if they throw it straight and dive in, oops, they throw it straight and dive in, it's not going to, they throw it way out here, boom, might land. <coughs> you know? Um, or a Big looping left, boom, that ain't gonna hit you, the head is, you know, or when you're crouched down, you shoot up with a left hook, boom, oh, oh, gotcha, sorry, you know, dumbass, like, you didn't know my fucking head was here, you asshole, um, so, you know, and if you do that, how can the ref say it was intentional, well, even though this man so wrong means I actually did throw headbutts with zero punches being thrown at the time. Just a pure headbutt um, to be disqualified and lose two points, actually. But <clears throat> flat out be disqualified. But he um, threw several uh, and was getting more and more blatant with it. The more he realized he could do it, the more he did it. That's the thing. The more he realized he could do it, the more he did it. And I think he knew that, like, beforehand that he was going to be allowed to use it. I just didn't think he knew to what extent. They probably said use it all the way. And he went in and used it right off the bat, got a knockdown off of it. It was probably like, whoa, I'm going to be able to really do this? 
and once half the fight's through and you're getting fucked up, you're going to start headbutting a lot, because he did a lot, you know, I mean, uh, man, it's fucking bullshit, you know, it, it's just bullshit, it really is, I mean, round six was a fucked up round, because, It was probably the most blatant butt of all. Uh, barely threw a body shot. He kind of just whipped it out like... <sighs> he barely threw a body shot. Just whipped his head right into Roman's fucking face. And smashed his fucking face. Uh... As usual, it's Roman's face meeting the top of Rung Vizai's head. Uh, when this kid does not fight upright, he's way down like this. So how the fuck are you crushing him in the fucking head and or in the face all the time with the top of your head if you're not intentionally doing it? And put all that butts in slow mo and see for yourself. Or maybe just rewatch the fight a few times and you can clearly fucking see. You don't even need slow mo. My God, if you can't tell what the name of the game is with those headbutts, then you you're a fucking boxing noob. Because they were as 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 intentional as they come. You know, as they get. Period. Um, I mean, he just fucking whipped, whipped fucking Rung Vizai's head in, man. Just pounded his fucking head in. Um, but, and then Rung Vizai swung his head in there. Uh, into, you know, Roman's face. Uh, hey, it is what it is, right? Um, There what there was like ten fifteen seconds on the clock or something. Uh, there was like ten fifteen seconds on the clock. Um, I can't remember if Rung Vizai got hurt again. Or, or did they call another timeout because of head use? Yeah, he did. He fucking called another timeout because of another headbutt. Because he got hurt. Dude, fucking dude, Rung Visa is. D is is as disgraceful as they get. I put him in the league with Ward, Salido, Floyd, and Rung Vizai. And I liked Rung Vizai up until this fight, so I saw what a piece of shit he could be. Uh, you can't do that to a fighter. Especially, I mean, how would you like a fighter to headbutt your whole entire face and r try ruining your face to where... Every fight you have in the future is now harder because you can cut easier on both eyes. Um, thus, you have uh, you know less of a chance of winning these huge fights you're you, you were supposed to get. So you got fucking robbed, even though no one counts the shit. Uh, even Kellerman said afterwards, well, he's still number one to me. Everyone, Doug Fisher said he's still number one to me. He's still number one to me. Uh, I know Steve Kim said he's still number one to him. I mean, he's still number one to fucking Montero. Uh, uh, still number one to Max Barra. Uh, I know that. I mean, I know he thinks uh, Roman won anyway. Um, I think he has Roman pound for pound number one. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's Roman. He's still pound for pound number one to everyone. So why does the Ring Magazine not have him pound for pound number one? I'm going to talk about all this shit in other videos. i got so much to talk about. Uh, but let's get to this fight over here. Round 7 here. Roman's nursing his cuts. Uh, I remember this one. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, he was slowing it down. Uh, it, it was, it, he was, it was close. Uh, Roman was winning, but it was close. Then the last minute, uh, Roman really turned it up, uh, you know, notch and, and and just started pounding, pounding away on Ron Visa, and uh, Ron v, Ron Visa got hit with a fucking straight ten piece that hurt him bad, man. Hurt him bad, and what the fuck? I'm talking, not talking like a ten piece, like one to bottom, like. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm talking, he got hit with about ten unanswered punches in about ten seconds, maybe tops, six, se se seven seconds, um, unanswered, just getting smashed. And what happens? And he's hurt. Headbutt. Headbutt. Ain't that fucking amazing. A fucking headbutt. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Again! Headbutt! And while you're fucking hurt. It's the beginning of the round. That could have been the round Roman took him the fuck out and, and probably would have been because Roman came to whoop ass at the beginning of that round as he was doing um but man I can't that shit pisses me off pisses me off I can't stand disgraceful boxers. Look, Willis called and the shitty, of, shitty fucking officials who can't even do the simplest job on earth. Anyone you fucking gym rats, boxers, anybody who's ever you know in the in the gym doing their thing boxing. If you ever ref the fight, even just ref, you know, two guys having a little sparring match, you know that it's the easiest job in the world. But these guys can't even do it. These professional, high-profile refs. They're sp supposed to know more than we do at the local gyms, huh? How come they can't ref as good as we do, huh? <laughs> it's a joke. They need to come to a local gym and hire a ref to get anyone fucking good, you know? But then they'd be, you know, e easier and cheaper to buy, actually. <laughs> They go to the Rust Belt, find a ref, and they just offer the guy like a fucking twelve pack of a fucking uh, what do they drink? A uh, Pabst Blue Ribbon or some shit. He'd be like, "Yeah, no problem. Fight, fight, fights all your guys." Yeah. Anyway, um, in round six, though. Round six, outlanded by over three to one. Roman outlanded him by over three to one and hurt him. Now he is up by round four, round five, and round six. He is up three fucking points now. See how that works? No. He's up three rounds. Let's put it that way. He's up three rounds now. Um, shit, what was I talking about? Oh, I was talking about when he was in round uh, seven when he got fucking headbutted. Um, yeah, Willis calls uh, another time and s again doesn't take a fucking point away. AGAIN! Doesn't take a point away. So Willis, I know Willis is in on it. 100% Willis is in, in on it. You know, it's, it's... It was the worst cut by far, too. I mean, come on, Raph. The worst cut by far? I mean, it was bad. That's when blood started just pouring and Lampley and uh, Roy Jones Jr. 
uh, say some dumb shit like, uh, that may have been around, uh, wrong visa, I, uh, may have, you know, took, you know, could have won, you know, maybe some judges would have gave it to him, I mean, really, um, around seven, I messed around, uh, I also only got, uh, almost two to one. Almost two to one. You know? Roman's laying there like 28 punches to the other dude's 15. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll come on. I mean, come on, he's beat his ass. What the fuck, what fight are they watching? And Artorius and CompuBox, their numbers both match up. You know, maybe not the exact numbers, but basically the, the percentage-wise, you would expect CompuBox is always inflated, so it's inflated but for both. But when it comes down to it, they, they basically agree on every round, you know, when they say Roman landed, outlanded him three to one, he outlanded him three to one, maybe four to one, you know, <laughs> once you really look at it, uh, so that's just what it is, um, but it's like, what the fuck is boxing becoming, man, because If you can't tell Roman just won round seven clear as day, then this sport is fu falling apart. This sport is falling apart, and I'm doing a, f a fucking very important video. Not next. Next, I'm talking about Kovalev and Ward too. But uh, the video right after that, I'm, uh, I'm doing uh, is going to have something with um, Golovkin Jacobs in the title, maybe, and. Uh, um, Something about uh, boxing isn't that subjective, because it's not as, as subjective as some people like to fucking pretend it is. You know, they'll stretch it so far just to make their guy win. It's like, shut the fuck up, man. Yeah. This dude just lost uh, round seven, too, by the way. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, I, I, I actually... Yeah, uh, almost two to one. Um, another, another round. Wrong visa. Um, so now he's up four. Okay, up four, and we only have eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve left. Wrong visa has to win every single fucking round. Then he can win. All right, round eight. Yo, I'm sorry. Yo, oh, by the way, I gotta talk about this. Uh, first of all, um, wrong visa is coach's fucking pink and yellow little, uh, skin tight, like Under Armour type shirt, whatever kind of shirt it was. Um, had the all pink with the yellow trimming, like the 80s Beastie Boy shit. It was, it was too fucking funny, man. Oh my god, I was fucking cracking up so bad. It just kept cracking me up throughout the fight. And he's like, Brada! Because they have the girl talking for him, and she's saying it like, Brada, Brada, Brada! And it was just like this gay brother talking to his straight brother, like, win, win! That's what it sounded like, man. It sounded like this, like, gay guy in his gay outfit talking like a girl. Uh, <laughs> coaching his fucking brother in a title fight. That fucking shit sounded so funny. I was cracking up. <laughs> but, but, anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, uh, but, anyway, so, so far now, Rung Visa, this is going in to round eight. And so far, Rung Visa has landed six damn headbutts that the ref acknowledged. 
only that the ref acknowledged. There's, there's, I mean, I can literally show you five in that same frame that he did not acknowledge. Um, just because they didn't, ah, like Roman didn't go, you know, that's how you, you know, it really got to go, really got to, if the headbutt doesn't do its job, it probably won't get called because there's not going to be a reaction. You know, but once the reaction happens, then the ref's like, hey, what happened? You know, like, he don't fucking know. You know, please. Oh, class your heads, accidental. Class your heads, accidental. Accidental, my ass! You know, fucking facts. Um, anyway. I didn't see say that, but yeah. Uh, anyway. But six accidental heads, man. I mean, come on. I mean, six and then another, what, you know, eight to ten, just up till this point that the the ref saw but didn't address. You know, that's like being nice. I mean, being, being nice, that's over 20 headbutts, you know? Think about it. And, Wait, no, he didn't land. So what am I thinking? I'm thinking 16 and it's 6. Uh, 6 maybe, you know. The guy. Whether it's 14 butts, 16 butts, 20 butts. Because he probably did land over 20 butts, actually. But still, you know. I mean, that's insane. And then he just does it again. Like, and you still don't take a point away right after you just fucking saw him do it before. He just did it. A couple seconds later, he does it again. Like, he's showing you no respect. He's showing your authority as the ref of this ring and the commander of this ring and, and the commander of the rules of the Marcus of Queensbury that... He's saying, fuck you. You won't enforce them because you're a pussy. I don't have any respect for you. That's what he's telling you, Willis. So, congrats. You got shown no respect. Zero respect on Saturday night. You got made to look like a fool. And a dirty, corrupt fool at that. How does that make you feel? Do you enjoy feeling corrupt? Because I don't know if you are. You know, who knows? I always, I always thought you were a good guy, but hey, you never know. You never know, man. But uh, what um, you know, Roman has at this point uh, two big cuts on his eye. Uh, the size coaches can't stop. You know, from bleeding, they just can't, um, because the the it's a head on head, it's the top of the head hitting a sharp spot on a uh, brow, right at the corner of the brow too, where it's sharp, so it splits the whole way to the bone and only stitches is stopping it, so it's gonna keep bleeding all night. It's right there at the guard. It's always gonna get rubbed. It's always gonna be getting punched or rubbed or something. The bleeding isn't is never not gonna stop. It's gonna be a bloody mess. You're not gonna stop it. So for the rest of the fight, you're dealing with blood in your eye. You know, so suck it up, uh, cause that shit ain't being stopped. I don't care if you put a glob of Vaseline like a motherfucker on it. As soon as one punch hits that Vaseline off, blah, it's just gonna pour like, uh, you know, St. Helens, honestly, because it's going to blow once that shit leaks out and just <laughs> you know, pouring down you. Um, but yeah, uh, he got the, uh, all this blood that they can't stop the bleeding, uh, the, you know, because the cuts are fucking enormous, and Rung Visa ends up without a scratch on his face. You know, without a scratch on his face. All these accidental headbutts. Oh, the top of his head randomly six times smashed 
into Roman Gonzalez's face. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, that's what happened. I forgot. I forgot. Silly me. I mean, come the fuck on. Don't try playing me. It's fucking stupid. Um, you know. <laughs> uh, 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 his fucking head crashed into Roman's face so many times. It was just insane. He just would not stop doing it. Um, but, uh, one of the best, think of this, one of the best defensive fighters alive, all right, one of the best defensive fighters alive, right, shit, I mean, <laughs> What was the one of, if or if not, bus arguably any one of the top, you know, arguably top any top three uh, best defensive fighter alive argument um, of any era? Could imagine a guy uh, headbutting him in the head, fucking that many times I'm busting his face up that many times um, I mean do you know how many butts you have to be throwing to actually get something to land because this is one of the best defensive fighters in the world he stops everything including head butts but if you just throw enough something's gonna land you throw fucking 20 one will land you know, and that's all this guy did. He just kept fucking, he was throwing them non-stop. Most didn't land or have effect. But then occasionally, whack, hurts him bad. But when he was hurt, he would just dive right at him. You know, he would do anything to make it land. Uh, so, you know, like literally, like he did uh, later on, he just literally just goes whap, headbutts him. As soon as he gets almost knocked out, and goes whap, headbutt. And gets a big old timeout for it. Like a fucking bitch ass. You know. But. Roman actually kind of blocked that one. Because he saw it coming and went like this. Whoop, and made his head hit the top of his head. So you know Tom Body even blocks headbutts. Um, but he still got headbutted. But whatever. Uh, I mean. If you, it's just, just if you rewatch that fight and can't see that first of all Roman won, and you can't see how uh, Rung Vizai was just using his head all night long and really not landing much, then you're a fucking noob and need to pick a new sport. And like I said before, probably a team sport, you know. Um, but going into round, round uh, eight, Roman was dealing with the cuts, you know, it, it, giving Rong Visa a target now, uh, big target. But but first uh, first half of the fight, um, it was close. However, Roman was leading uh, for sure. He was in control. Sorry about that. Um, Sorry about that. Ah, uh, shit. What was I saying? What was I talking about? Um. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was close, but Roman was in control uh, of the first minute and a half. Uh, clearly. Um. And then the 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 second half, it. Roman turned it up a notch. You know, had a little rally and uh. Not a big rally like he did every other round, like most other rounds, but uh, had a little rally and clearly won. Rungvis, I did nothing that round. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, round eight. Round eight. Even um, live. Live, did I give it to him? 
Nope, gave it to Roman. I gave seven to uh, Wrong V's Eye Live, though. Um, along with uh, some others. But, um, uh, what was it? Around eight. <laughs> yeah, Roman outlanded him. Over. No, I can't. No, not over. But four to one. Forty to ten, bitches. In round eight. Forty to ten, motherfucker. So, and hurt the cat. So. You know, and hurt him. So, who won that round? You got outlanded four to one. Who won that round, huh? Let's see. You get outlanded uh, two to one, three to one. Uh, outside the first round, you get outlanded two to one, three to one, two to one, um, four to one, three to one. Um, Two to one. Four to one. I mean, shit's getting bad for you. I mean, four to one, you you just lost eight rounds in a row. That's what just happened. He just lost eight fucking rounds in a row. Okay? Um, now he's up by round four, five, six, seven, eight. And guess what that round proves? Every single judge gave it to him as well, by the way. Let's go right. Pretty sure. That's how dominant it was. Um, round eight. Yes, Feldman did. Did Waleska. Uh, yes, he gave it to Roman. And did uh, Letterman's uh, fucking shit ass daughter who's corrupt as all fuck allegedly um I already gave hers I, I, um oh I don't have her rounds or, I, I didn't write her rounds down shit fuck I don't know if she gave it to the other two judges gave it to him I think everyone gave it to him though cause he fucking dominated it was four to ten for crying out loud. Uh, I mean, uh, four to four to one. I landed him four to one. Forty bunches to ten bunches. I mean, just give me a break. It was ridiculous. You know, it wasn't even a damn match. You just beat the shit out of him. But hey, someone wants to say one round eight. Go for it, you dumbass. So we know he just won every motherfucking one of them rounds. So why is anyone arguing? Round nine. All right. The doctors, before round nine starts, the doctors check his cuts, Roman's cuts, and also go talk to Wrong V's eyes team. They send doctors over to tell his team to stop headbutting. Like, that's going to stop him. You know what might stop him? If Willis had taken some fucking points early on. You know? Like in the third round. Point. Oh, it'll stop right then and there. It stops, and if it happens again, point happens again. DQ fights over. So you know, and at that point, Roman's face wouldn't have been a fucking head butted, bloody, just scarred up mess either. Going forward with his career, and he wouldn't have got blatantly robbed by the powers that be because he doesn't make them enough money. He's not good for business. We, you know, we need more money in our sports department. You know, so they they fuck this young kid over, not this young kid, this young man over, uh, after he did everything the right way, came up the hard way, put in all the hard work, beat all these greats. You know, 17, 18, depending on who you think. Um, B level to elite level, A level, like a pound for pound level fighters, um, beat them all. Champions, 
some several became champions uh, after he beat them champions now um, uh, uh, and he beat them um, just some of the best fighters in the world that he beat or they're, they're still out there and active I mean uh, he, he was always supposed to lose moving up can he really do it can he really do it oh he does it oh he does it you know so they took it from him They took what was rightfully his. And is Ring really a legitimate magazine? Like, if Ward's number one and he won by robbery that everyone knows, everyone knows, and everyone also knows Roman lost by robbery. So why don't you just put Ward back where he was and Roman back where he was? Because if Ward can be, you know, congratulated and number one because he won a ro by robbery, he hasn't had a good win. And I mean good, not great, just good. Sullivan Barrera, decent. Good is like Frotch and Kessler. Um, like Lemieux and you know, Murray and things like that. Those are good wins. Ward's last good win was in 2011 versus Carl Frotch. What the fuck is he doing as our pound for pound number one fighter in the world? Please explain. Please explain that bullshit. You know? It's fucking insanity. But Roman just showed, proved to you that he could not be beat right there unless he would have lost every single other round. And he didn't even do, or, or, or got knocked out. He would have had to have at least gotten dropped. Didn't get dropped, didn't get knocked out. He stayed on his feet for the rest of the fight. Thus, he could not lose by points because he banked round two through fucking uh, eight. Bam. Two through eight. Bang. Okay, but let's go. Okay, <laughs> that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, uh, that's the seven rounds. You know, so he might have got dropped, but that's seven rounds. He, he'd still win. You know, it'd just be 114, 113. You know, um, anyway, though. Uh, because it was an 8 8 you know, round. I mean, if judges really wanted to, they could have made it, you know, a uh, 10, 10, 10, you know, you know or uh, 10, 9 round, because it was a dead even round, dead even, except for the knockdown, so, it's like, you really going to give them 10, 8 over some, like, some bullshit, you know, so, but, hey, who cares, whatever, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't even matter, because, like I was saying, the doctors were checking them out and stuff, and said it was all good. Um, and then, uh, they let Roman, uh, fight on, you know, first minute of round nine, uh, Roman B's eyes throwing bombs, trying to do something, see, and this is how you know that he knows he's down, he, he's losing bad, he's, you know, getting fucked up, um, he's trying to take control. He's trying to do something, trying to cause something, trying to hurt Rome and do something. He comes out going crazy, throwing bombs. Um, does nothing, Rome, and just schools him, dodges everything, schools him so bad and fucks him up. Uh, and then Roman took control and beat the fuck out of him for the rest of the round. Uh, well beat the fuck out of him for 
Oh, 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 check this out. Check this out. Okay, here. It was around nine. Yeah. One minute, 40 seconds left in round nine. When it, when it says there's a minute, 40 left in round nine on HBO. Whoa. The, just a minute 40 left and uh, if you're watching HBO when it says 140 um, watch right there you know um, in round nine round nine right before Willis uh, tells him to break you know uh, right before Willis breaks the fighters go go watch Rung Vise smash the top of his head right into Roman's left eye. The dude's a real piece of shit. You know, truly a piece of shit. And Willis, again, clearly saw it. From his point of view, look where he's standing, and said not a fucking word. You know, go watch that in the, in the, the one minute forty left in round nine. You know, um, right before Willis breaks him, right before he breaks him, you'll see it. Watch, well, wrong his eyes ahead. That's all. Um, Fucking bullshit. Uh, but I do now that I talk about last round with uh uh no mind, never mind, I'm confused, never mind. Uh but um Roman must have got pissed that, that he kept that button him because he surely attacked non stop for the rest of the round. That seven butts Willis actually acknowledged so far in only not eight and a half rounds, really, at, at this point. And there's seven acknowledged butts. No points taken. Nothing. Um, no major warnings. Nothing. You know, no, you do it again. Point. Nothing. Nothing. Um... <laughs> it's insane. No cuts on Rung Vizai, uh, and Roman is a bloody mess, and not one drop of blood was caused by a Rung Vizai punch. Uh, round was all Roman in round nine. Round nine, he beat the fuck out of him. Um, he didn't go all two to one on his ass, but he, um, He only ended up about more than 50% of what, you know, uh, more than 50% of what a, what Rung Vizai landed on him. Roman also landed on Rung Vizai, plus 50% more. Um, Roman has, was never outlanded. In any round, ever, by any, by anyone, on uh, anyone's calculations in this fight uh, he was he, he outlanded uh, Sorong Vizai in every single round except the very first round where they each landed eight um, I don't think they ever threw an even amount no no Roman outlanded this motherfucker easy every round. And clearly, never by two threes, always by eight nines and higher. You know, always. So, uh, it is what it is. He's never landed less than eight punches more. So, you know. What was it? Never landed less than... Well, here's one. Seven. Seven. Seven was the least... Uh, 
<laughs> he amount he ever outlanded his opponent by in one round. Usually it's much much higher. He's outlanded him by fucking thirty some punches before when the guy only landed uh, like ten. You know, God, I mean, he's landing. They go wrong. He's landing ten. He's landing forty six over here. So that's round <clears throat> nine now. Four. Uh, that's two through nine. What does Rung Visa have, huh? How'd you guys score anything for Rung Visa so far? Are you fucking blind? You not know how to score boxing? And that's what I'm going to do a video on. Maybe a series so they're not long and people will actually watch them. Uh, real quick, though. Around 10. Uh, what I've noticed is if a boxing head doesn't like Roman, what they'll do is they'll actually not stare at anything but Roman's face. And then they only watch to see the shots that Roman's taking. And they're not seeing everything he's doing and what he's dishing out. So they think Roman got hit with, like, got beat in that round. You know, especially you they go, that's a close round. I could have went through on visa. The guy goes, so, yeah, I did, it did, it did. You know, I, I think so. I, I, I thought that one, you know, time he... He upper right uppercutted Roman took the round. You dumbass! What about the time Roman uppercutted him eight times afterwards? Did you not see that? You know, and, and shit like that. They don't. They don't see that because they don't want to. They want to see Roman lose. Because let's face it, America doesn't like fucking foreigners. You know, unless you bring in big money. Anywhere will love you if you bring in big money. If you don't bring in big money, they don't want you holding a big position. You know, like pound for pound number one. They don't want a guy like Roman holding it. They'd much rather have like a, a Cobra and a, or a Ward get it. They'd love for like a Triple G to have it, a Canelo to have it. Um, uh, it's, you know, that. Only a money maker. They want a money maker to have it. You know, a can you beat this guy type thing. That's what they want. They want one of those. Well, Ward's not that guy because, you know, we already seen him get beat. So he's, yeah, we, we've, we know he can be beat. Fuck him. Yeah, he can be beat. He just was murdered. Uh, next, please. So maybe after Kovalev knocks him out this time. It'll be, you know, Kovalev. Um, I, I don't think that this win will make Kovalev pound for pound number one, uh, unless he does something crazy. But, because to me, I still think uh, Roman is pound for pound number one and never lost. And Ward is not number two. He is far from it. He don't even touch the fucking pound for pound list. And if he does, it's... 10. He ain't even on the ain't even the 10. Fuck. Get the fuck out of here. He ain't even on my pound for pound list. He, he ain't did shit since 2011. In his last fight, he just got whooped. His, he has, his last good win was in 2011. Then he has one decent win in 2000 fucking, what, 15? Uh, then he had a, 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 an ass whooping in 2016. So... No. Fuck him. He sucks. No, fuck him. He's trash. Um, anyway. <clears throat> uh, just wanted to get, you know, whatever. Um, round 10, though. Um, blood's pouring now. Blood is pouring. Leaking like a fucking sieve. It's everywhere. Um, and Roman and Rung Vise are just letting that leather fly. Uh, both gave each other hell. Uh, but Rung Vise, uh, I thought, um, took round 10. He gave better uh, than he got. Because of the headbutts, obviously. Roman, the blood was fucking Roman up so bad. He, he really couldn't see. Even though he did outland uh, 
what's his face? Porting every, every, every source. But, um, what round was that? 10 I said? Uh, yeah, it was 24 punches, then 19 punches. It's a little subjective. You might be flipping around 25, 20, or. Yeah, so I got 23 to 17 or something, whatever. Uh, but it's about that. He landed, he landed about six punches more on Rongvi's eye. <coughs> Roman, that is. Uh, but I still thought he lost the round. I just thought Rongvi's eye did the better work, you know. Um, I thought maybe he was taking the round off, you know, cool and just chilling. Who knows, because... <laughs> he had the fucking fight in the bank um, so I thought yeah he was coasting for a bit and then would explode in the 12th which is exactly what he did so he, he thought he had the fucking goddamn fight in the bag um, and didn't want to get all cut up so hey I'll coast for a while and then give the fans one last round to go out happy on you know um, unless I can stop this guy but uh, at the start of um, the 11th Max Kellerman, Roy Jones Jr., they are talking about it's so close that no matter fucking who wins, uh, that the other guy will complain. First off, there are two rounds left in a fight where Roman has hurt this guy in basically every single round, okay? He just hurt him. Uh, last round, the round before, the round before that, and the round before that, and the round before that, and the round before that. So maybe just hold your horses here, and he actually might knock him out. Uh, second of all, tell Willis to do his job, and he would have knocked him out. But, um, <clears throat> it's so close to either. What the fuck fight are you watching? Second, second, what fucking fight are you watching? And third, why are they fucking creating this bullshit narrative to, uh, like, they're building it all night that Roman is winning, but how, like, I could see the judges' cards being all over the place, you know, um, li literally prepping and programming you, uh, not me because I wasn't programmed, uh, I can show you my live fight night scores, um, I changed one round, or two, two, I flipped two, um, but, uh, <laughs> I had Roman win in either way, um, uh, clear either way. Uh, however, um, but it's, they're, they're prepping and programming you, everyone at home, um, to, you know, go along with the get along, just be like, oh, yeah, I get it, uh, duh, yeah, you know, like, uh, hmm, they want you to, you know, they're, they're, they're prepping and programming you to, uh, prepping and programming you into accepting and then also repeating that so-and-so actually won legitimately and why, you know. They're giving you a narrative. They're giving you ammo and telling you what you can say and giving you things to say, you know. It, it, it was disgusting. When I saw that, that, I really was like, whoa. Whoa, I was pretty scared there, honestly. Even when Letterman didn't give Roman the second, I got a really bad feeling in my gut. I was like, oh, what the fuck's going on tonight, man? I really got a bad feeling in my gut right at that moment. I swear it on everything I did. Um, but, I mean... They want you to think, you know, judges are subjective, you know, um, uh, uh, 
Yeah, I, I get it. You know, I mean, boxing is subjective as a whole. Different, different judges score on different criteria. You know, that's why this whole boxing is subjective is such a bullshit. There's no fucking subjectivity. It's so simple. So simple. Who caused more fucking physical harm? Um, you know, damn near wins the round every time. You know, I don't care if my if my one punch breaks your orbital, you can fucking hit me, fucking nine times. I win. That round, I fucking win. You know, this is pro boxing, bitch. You know, St. Amateurs. I broke your fucking orbital. Whose who shots are more effective? Your nine? The, uh, I have no I have no marks. Maybe a, a, a red mark right here. Okay, you 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 got me real good right here. They hurt. They zapped me up, but I'm fine now. Now the uh, they're not effective anymore at all. But mine just started. Now it's gonna get all fucked up all night long. You're gonna be basically your career's gonna be over by the time I'm done. Uh, fucking your eye all up. <laughs> you see the difference? See the difference? One shot versus nine. But it doesn't matter. The one shot beat the nine. Why? Because we know that one was much more effective than those nine. And are going to have more of an effect. You know? You know so what's what's a, a shot worth that causes damage? You know, think about it. Compared to shots that never cause damage. Remember, Roman was never hurt in this fight. Never wobbled in this fight. Uh, put down? Was he put down? Yeah, he was put down by getting zapped with a headbutt to the temple. Um, at the same time as being pushed with a, a, a punch to the heart. You know, like a, a stepping back and an uppercut to the heart. Yeah, you're going to fall backwards. And people will be talking about, oh, he took the whole eight to get up. Uh, yeah, because he just got headbutted hard as fuck. He's like, holy shit, what the fuck happened? Oh, he probably, who knows if he even felt it. He's probably like, that shit was hard as fuck on my head. You know what the hell? Shit. Um, but, yeah, he got up. And what happened? The second round, he murdered your dude. You know, and killed him every round until the 10th, which he finally gave a round away. Um, and then at the start of the 11th, you know, like I said, Max and I were talking our fucking bullshit, um, about being close, like fucking idiots, uh, you know, like whatever, you know, um, but it, it was, uh, uh, when I was talking about, like, everyone going along and prepping and, uh, you know, programming and it's subjective and all that like it, are people just trying to sell the fight by saying it's so like the fight's so close this is so amazing like trying to sell that they have a better product or are they trying to make you okay and cool with the fact that Roman got robbed very badly you know, something you got to consider and think on your own. I know the answer in my mind. Uh, plain and simple. Uh, I mean, ask yourself that. But round 11, Roman uh, looked like he was taking it off. Uh, wrong visa. He was boxing nicely. Uh, slow round. Uh, no big moments at all. However, uh, Rung Giza uh, got 11 because he did the better work. I mean, Roman really didn't do any work. Uh, he landed uh, three more bunches than Rung Giza. 11 for Roman, 8 for Rung Giza. Round 12, though. The round that separates the men from the boys. Uh, you know, Roy Jones Jr., remember he was talking about from how how much blood uh, 
Roman had lost over the previous, you know, four, 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 five rounds. Um, how much blood is out of his body, thus, you know, which carries oxygen, thus with the it carries ox ox oxygen to you know through his veins through to the muscles. So if take a large amount of blood out of your body, your oxygen you know your oxygen level is way down. Your muscles are not going to be as strong, nor have the endurance they would if all that blood didn't come out of your body. Right. It's just just the way it is. That's science. It's health, really, but fact. Um, <clears throat> and he was talking about that. You know, he's gonna be extremely dead from all that blood coming out of him. Um, uh, Letterman gave Rung Visa in round seven and nine. I didn't. And Letterman had it 103, uh, 104, 103 for uh, Roman. Um, going into the 12th. I don't know who he had winning, because they never ever tell you that. But he had him winning going into the 12th and he definitely won the 12th every fucking judge even gave it to him so I think it's clear to say Letterman gave it to him so yeah I don't win uh, uh, what did I say um, what 104 uh, to 103 is uh, yeah that I'm uh, 114, uh, 112, 114, 112, uh, that was actually, uh, no, uh, 115, 112, yeah, that's, that's my score, but, uh, my, uh, Live Night of the Fight score. That's the Live Night of the Fight score. After rewatching, shit, I don't add it up. But <laughs> I'm not adding it up in my head right now. Um. <clears throat> Oh, there was even a point deduction in round six from Rung Vizai. Good, he did take a point, actually. I, I didn't remember that at all. Good, 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 good. Yeah, I don't have it written down here or there. Oh, good, huh? Oh, that's good. Um, if he took a point deduction, if he didn't, let me know. I, 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 didn't, I didn't remember him, but if he did, cool. Man. At least he took one. He should have done more than that, though. Um, especially in the sixth round, he should have did it in the third and then DQ'd him by six. But, um, yeah, I gave one to Rung Vizai, 10 8. And Ten and eleven. That's it. Ten, eleven, and uh, round one. You get two rounds and round one. Now go say you got to fight Roman. Whoop de doo. Fucking bitch. And uh, going into the twelfth round, one judge. Uh, had Roman down by one point, and the other two had Roman down by three fucking rounds. He could not win without a knockout. He couldn't win fucking two rounds ago without a knockout. You know? Period. He needs a knockout. Um, he's needed one. 
um, for a while. They've been fucking them bad, real bad. Um, <sighs> oh my god. The fix was in. The fix was in, in my opinion, man. I mean, it, it, it just was. It just was, you know? Think about it. Look. The pay-per-view number one star in boxing, you know, not like the number one star in boxing, but the number one pound for, the pound for pound number one star in boxing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the co-main event. Uh, the house fighter, big drama, little drama show, you know, um, coming to the headline of a pay-per-view, you know, major card, right, um, big time fighter, you know, considered one of the greatest fighters in the world, got all these big fights lined up, you know, uh, HBO got other plans, but they got some big fights lined up, um, uh, you know, and those kind of guys, I'm sorry, they do not, they do not get robbed. It's just not how boxing works. Why would the house fighter want to rob them? So they, ca they can't make as much money on them? Huh? Uh, who would rob them? Who? Who would rob them? That's the, the question, and you got to answer that. Who would do it? And who would have the most to gain by doing it? Who gains the most out of robbing, robbing Roman? I, that's what I asked myself immediately. Two days later, I found out Andre Ward and Sergey Kovalev are one and two in the fights on. You know, because I heard it was basically on like a week before, and they, you know, they were already agreed. It was already on um, three weeks before the announcement, but uh, I got the email that it was, the press release e email, that it was official, um, and I was like, eh, figure, it's, it's, I knew it was coming, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's, that happened because James Prince wanted his boy to win and wanted to give him every advantage under the sun and he was happy to get Bird he was lucky to get Bird as a ref or maybe they even hooked Bird up because it looked like they gave Bird about a bird to help him fucking ignore all the fouling and shit that fucking Ward was doing uh, that's for sure but hey you know Bird might like the way, who knows. Um, but, 12th round of Roman. Nothing to tell me about Cobra Love Ward right now. I got another video for that coming up. Uh, the, but the house fighter not getting robbed. That, that fighter, that was that, a house a house fighter. Um, and he only got robbed because it was a, a joint venture. two promoters, 50-50 promotion. So... You know, they could both do whatever they want. And unfortunately, one played it fair, and one played it like a piece of shit would play it. Like a scumbag uh, who's never earned a fucking honest dollar in his life. Uh, because every dollar he's ever fucking made came from the first dollar he made, which was a crooked dollar. So he's never made an honest dollar. Not even with his businesses, because they're not really honest, because they weren't started with honest money. So that little fucking scumbag ain't fucking... And I, and I, I Scarface is my favorite rapper, and I used to love James Prince. But in boxing, he's a piece of shit. Get the fuck out of boxing, James Prince. Or step up and be a fucking man. And, you know, have your fighters be a man, like your people are. You know? Uh, Shit, you know, quit using your fucking, quit threatening people, you know, threatening a, a, a dead man's family to sell you Andre Ward for pay.
pennies on the dollar is disgusting, bro. That's fucking disgusting. Because he got Andre Ward $37,000. Go listen to, listen to you know, Dan's brother talk about it. He, 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 he's sick. He, make, he's sick about it. It just makes him sick. He gets so angry. There's, there's interview footage out there of him getting angry about it and saying they got 37000 That's what they got. For Andre Ward, thirty-seven grand. That's all Prince would give me since sign it or what do you think? You know, sign it or else. You'll sign a, a one with a lower amount. You know, oh no, uh, maybe it was that what he said? Hmm, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable, but yeah, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, look back to the whole robbery thing too, and judges aren't gonna rob a house fighter. The co-main, the big drama, little drama, the guys who always fight together, the pound for pound number one guy, they're not going to rob him on a whim. They're not going to be robbed, they're not going to rob him unless they are told so, and they were not told so by anyone that had anything to do with that fight. It was just like Bradley and um, Pacquiao when Floyd wanted the pound for pound number one spot back but he couldn't take it because Pacquiao was there what he do he paid in Vegas and he, once he Manny fined his state he paid them to rob Manny and boom now he got his position and Manny is no longer one why ever 99% of boxing press row squirted for fucking uh, Manny, so why would he lose his number one spot? And he dropped to like five. What the fuck? Why didn't he drop to like two? <laughs> it's funny, man. It's just funny how that shit works, right? Like, um, <laughs> I'll get to it. Uh, I guess I'm gonna be getting to it in another video here. You'll like it. It's funny. Uh, I can't get into it right now. It's just, it'll take like 15 minutes, but it's, it's funny as so. hell. Um, those type of guys don't get robbed by the judges. You know? They don't. I mean, judges are mostly pathetic. You know? And judges know what their pathetic job is. Okay? And we all know what that is. You go in and you score, you know, the close rounds for the house fighters. You know, they, they get the benefit of the doubt. At least that's how America does it. Other countries don't do that. Uh, not all countries do that. But in America, that's how it's done. You know, um, if you're in New York, uh, you got New York versus uh, a guy from Texas and you're fighting in Brooklyn, he's... The guy from Brooklyn in Brooklyn is getting every close round. You know, the guy f from Brooklyn fighting in Brooklyn versus a guy from Houston, the Brooklyn guy is going to get every close round. <clears throat> so just how it goes. You know, um, shouldn't happen that way, but, you know, some judges just do that. You know, they try to either please the crowd, but more than the crowd, they even try to please the promoter. So the promoter will have them back. You see? So, they fucked K2 over, but, you know, the K K2 don't, you know, have, uh, input they don't pick the referees and they don't pick the, the 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 judges and all that like these other promotional office no no that list ain't going no you're not me no no we're not no we're you're giving us these guys the the fighters and promoters are supposed to have nothing to do with who refs and judges the fights but we know factually and admittedly 
they pick and control, or, or pick who, uh, you know, refs their fight, controls their fight, refs it, and who judges it. They pick it. They all, they pick it. You know, if you're a big time superstar, you pick it all. So, you know, but, you know, guys like Golovkin don't do that. You know, guys like Ward do. Guys like Kovalev don't do that. Guys like Rigo do. You know, guys like Manny Pacquiao don't do that. Guys like Floyd Mayweather used to do that. You know, guys like Arthur Biterbiev don't do that. You know. You, you want uh, Adonis Stevenson does that. You know, it's just that simple. Oh, I can go on and on and on and on. You know, you want me to? <laughs> Lomachenko doesn't do that. Guess who does? Gary Russell Jr. You know, please. But, yeah, I mean, round 12. I mean, Roman just whooped his ass. Whooped his ass. Uh... But there was some fucked up shit in this round too, because when, when but when it comes to the robbery, you know, like I said, soon this happened, I said to myself, we will see, by you know who benefits the most over a little bit of time, and it only took like two days, and then I find out that Ward and Kovalev are pound for pound number one, and the fight is happening. It's on. It's on. I was like, wow, wow, could that have worked out any better? And it's it's already been agreed upon for weeks now. So they already knew this. HBO already knew this. It's time to nix this guy. One of you are next. And they if, it, they, if they don't, if the wrong guy has it, they can bounce that belt the whole way down to welterweight within fucking two years. You know, they can put it in any division they want so fast, you know, pound for pound. Um, so, they're, it's like kind of freed up now. Um, definitely Ward don't have it. I'd say Gennady Golovkin is, if Roman isn't pound for pound number one, your fucking uh, pound for pound number one, sure as shit better be Danny fucking, uh, uh, or, or I mean, Gennady Golovkin. Um, or Manny Pacquiao. It's Manny Pacquiao or fucking Gennady Golovkin. Uh, that's for sure. If you're going by, like, a, a, a criteria that, like, those, you know, saying, like, media goes by. Um, I've talked about it before, and I've given the criteria, and then explained my picks, but, um, what I didn't like <clears throat> was, like, a major, major player had to be involved, and, and, and involved. You know, like I said, we will find out, and or would find would find out over a little bit of time. It took all of two days, um, and I was able to you know realize what had gone down. Um, but you know, the round started uh, with Sarong Vizai uh, trying to box like he uh, did in the eleventh round and won, but that's because Roman let him. And he thinks he did good or something. No, just Roman lets you, you fuck. Uh, but Roman wouldn't let him this time. So they get tied up. Uh, Willis breaks him. And Rung hits Roman square on his two cuts. Um, well, well after he said break. And well before he said box. He said, break. They already put their hands down, took a half a step back, and then Rung just went, wow, boom, left pot, hit him about as hard as he fucking could, right on his fucking cuts, right on his cuts, just right on the cuts. Like, he didn't go for anywhere else. He went for them cuts deliberately and hit after the bell. Seven acknowledged cuts, or seven acknowledged headbutts, um, acknowledged low blows, a lot of low blows, um, acknowledged rabbit punches, a lot of rabbit punches, 
and um oh oh um all the acknowledge uh headbutts. I mean, it's just come on. This and this dude don't get disqualified? What? What planet are we living on, man? What fucking planet? It's like uh, what uh, what sport am I watching? You know? What sport? But anyway, um, uh, he's you know they're the you know Rome wanted to uh, box. Roman wouldn't let him. He, he was whooping his ass. Uh, bad. Um, he gets head butted, and you know. Uh, and fucking sub sucker punch on the break right on his cuts which just was about as flagrant as a fucking foul as you can get um Willis only warns only warns for extremely flagrant fouls extremely flagrant fouls he only warns you if if <laughs> oh my god oh my god you know it, it's crazy I mean like <laughs> uh I mean, it, it's just like, I mean, it, it sucks too because like, Willis's authority was completely disrespected. He disrespected the profession of being a referee in a, a boxing match and especially uh, a championship match of that significance he really disrespected his profession and made a mockery of it along with Rung Vizai and made a mockery of his title and himself and his okay brother with my gay and yellow shirt let me lob a Vaseline on you you know, that guy, I mean, I'm a fucking, a fucking translator. I don't know, they should have got a man translator. Or did he have a female trainer? That wasn't a female. I didn't tell me it wasn't, right? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I sure don't think so, but, uh, I mean, the dude is, you can't, you can't you, I, I don't, I don't support it. I don't, I don't support him at all. Not only do I think he got his ass over, I think he's one of the most disgraceful boxers that has ever, that, that not has ever, but walks the earth right now. One of the most disgraceful boxers. Uh, it's probably Andre Ward and then him. They're the most two disgraceful boxers uh, in boxing right now. Hands down. Um, <laughs> it just is what it is. Um, low, you got, you know, you think about it, uh, you know, uh, let's see, alright, Roman did absolutely nothing, was never hurt, never stunned, never wobbled, never fouled, never did anything, um, there were what seven acknowledged headbutts um by fucking referee Willis seven <laughs> unintentional headbutts there was 
several low blows, several rabbit punches, uh, several, there's several, uh, so, seven headbutts, several rabbit punches, several low blows, and there was something else, there was something else, oh, the, 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 it was the hit, the hit, uh, on the break, when he punched him right in his cuts, too. Um, being DQ'd, I mean, I think seven butts alone gets you DQ'd. And then all that on top of it, and you don't get DQ'd? Like, what? Yeah, the fix is in. The fix is in. Because you ain't Andre Ward. You know, please. I mean... And he could have called way more than seven low blows. He just didn't because that was already so many. Uh, but he had to call some because there were so many. That's why he did it. I mean, uh, it's just... Even the knockdown was a butt. And every, you know, random, random, unintentional headbutt um, or foul happens exactly when Sarung Vizai needs it to the most. Oh my god, how that works out for him every time. I mean, shut the fuck up if you are preaching that shit. Just shut the fuck up and rewatch the fight and actually watch the fight. You know, my God. And Willis did a piss poor job. Um, period. Uh, second half, Roman goes all fucking out uh, in the 12th round, all out, and beats the shit out of uh, Sorung Vizai uh, from pillar to post. And uh, Sorung Vizai just kept trying to fucking land uh, another headbutt. But eight, every fucking punch in the book was hurt bad with about one minute, 20 seconds left. One minute, 20 seconds left. Am I right on that? And even, uh, um, made, uh, Sorong Visa, Sorong Visa run, literally run from Roman. Run, because he was so hurt, he ran for the first time in the fight. Like, ran. God, ran. Literally, like, ran. It was hysterical. He beat him up so fucking bad. Um, hey. Uh, and then, uh, he, he started diving in and just clenching, trying to, you know, hopefully not get knocked out and survive. Because he knew apparently what was going to happen. You know? I mean, take your beating like a man, you fucking cheating little f bitch. You know? Uh, the crowd was booing, uh, the Sarung, uh, Sarung, uh, Sarung Vizai, uh, damn near the, the whole 12th round. If not the whole damn fight, but especially just the 12th. If they uh, were not cheering for Roman, uh, Sarong Vizai is just running, clenching over and over, trying to survive, throwing nothing and getting tagged up. Last 25 seconds, uh, Sarong Vizai decided to exchange. And finally, I guess he was like 25 seconds. Fuck it, let's exchange and actually punch. And I won't headbutt for 25 seconds. Well, you know, he got ate up by Roman. Ate the fuck up by Roman. Uh, Roman chewed him up. Um, Max Kellerman made a quote. I want to read it. 
It was right after I already said something, which is a quote, but I don't know. Read it. It was right after the fight. Damn it, I already know what it is. I don't even need to open this paper. Come on, here we go. Kellerman said right after the, the bell rang to end round 12, he said, Roman makes past greats proud. Proud and happy, I think it was. Um, or proud and happy, or happy, or proud and happy. I think it was proud and happy uh, with performances like that one no shit Sherlock he just fucking fought versus an ex-champion who's been on a fucking knockout roll um, dying for this fight staying active staying in tremendous shape um, probably juicing um, who knows but he's in the WBC so probably not uh, but but who knows? Who knows? Um, he's either way. He's training his ass off, uh, and he might as well. I mean, he could still be the champion, honestly, because that fight could, that with him and Quadras that could have went either way. That was just a coin toss. Quadras got lucky to get that belt. Uh, that could have still just been Sarong V's eyes, um, which it wasn't gonna be. Uh, uh, it went to Quadras. <gasps> the Mexican got the Mexican belt. What a surprise! You know, but hey, it is what it is. Um, I mean, dude, Roman fought great. Great. I'm talking all time great. Verse. The next champ, who could be a former champ, or I mean a current champ, not Roman's belt, but Quadras's. That fight could have went his way. Um, and he's a top, top 115 pounder, even though Roman made him look like he was a top 40 115 pounder. No, top, top, top 115 pounder. Um, and the guy was much bigger and strongerish. Uh, and I think Ro I mean Roman pushed him all around and showed that he was actually stronger. The other guy was just bigger and more muscle mass, but Roman was moving him all, putting him wherever he wanted him. You know, pushing him straight back. Wah, 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 wah. I mean. Um, Dirty as dirty, Sarong, Sarong V's eye was as dirty as they come, man. Oh my god. Uh, Roman, in Roman, he was, he's a ex-champ, could still be considered a, a current champ, a uh, top, top 115 pounder, um, extremely active, extremely in, in great shape, ready for this fight, dying for this fight, waiting for this for like three, four years now. Um, and a top, uh, you're a top, top 115 pounder. Um, you're much bigger and supposed to be stronger. You're extremely dirty. Um, but Roman still whooped 
your ass easily, sir. I'm gonna be that. Whoop your ass easily. Easily, son. Whooped your ass easily, son. Whooped it. Whooped it. Now what you gonna do? You know, go prance around with his belt? Yeah. yeah. You better go thank James Prince for that. You know, honestly. Allegedly. Just saying. And I'll get into, you know, we could talk about some other shit in another video. Uh, but this one's getting long here. And I'm not letting it go more than three hours. But, uh, um, yeah. <clears throat> it is what it is. I mean, uh, Ward's number one now, though, huh? <laughs> Tell him to beat an actual top 175 pounder. Kovalev, that is, like, Roman beat Sorong Vizai, and maybe I'll consider him for pound for pound top five. Maybe. But one? No. When you haven't done anything since 2011, well, fuck what I put you at pound for pound number one. You motherfuckers put this guy at pound for pound number one. He hasn't had one good win since 2011 versus Carl Frotch. And you fucking know it. But you still put him as pound for pound number one. I mean, yo, what kind of credibility does Ring Magazine have if they're saying that guy is pound for pound number one? Honestly. I don't care if a, if a couple panel members keep voting for him and Rigo, then, then kick them off the panel because they're clearly fucking biased faggots. You know, they're homosexuals and they're biased. They can't keep their fucking emotions out of the, the, the vetting room and, you know, voting room and, you know, discussion room, whatever. They can't keep their, 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 other head out the room. They need this head only. But they bring their other head along with them, as we all do, but they actually think with theirs the whole time. Instead of actually thinking with this. You know, they see Andre Ward's droopy eyes and the little head starts working. You know, his dreamy eyes captured them. And then they, you know, see Roma Gonzalez and this little five foot three guy and they think of a little 12 year old boy and get all freaked out and you know and disgusted um so they go back to to ward and check the ward pop pop number one you know <laughs> those guys those guys dougie fisher you talk about they need can kick them the fuck off the panel you're the damn uh, assistant editor. You're the editor of uh, the the Ring Online. I mean, I know you're not the boss boss of, of Ring, but you, you you have to have some word. You you you're some you know some flex, some power, some you know, go uh, go talk to someone. Get them scumbags booted off of and bring some new ones on. People who don't just vote for the same guy constantly just because they like him. You know, my God. You're making your own company lose credibility by keeping these douchebags on. And it's not like we can't tell who's voting for them. You have all their names of the voters right there. It's obvious to see who's voting for the guys. You know? It, it, it sure ain't... Uh, Jose Mendoza voting for him, I'll tell you that, you know, catch my drift, um, everyone knows who's doing it, doing it, and why, you know, because American, Olympian, he's, came up the tough, tough, tough road, tough road, black kid with crack, 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 crack mama, you know, she used to go, suck dick for money to buy crack and his dad used to you know help her by rubbing balls and you know he'd 
you know, do some other stuff too to get money for his dope habit and then they have a big old family time. I mean, I don't know. A hard luck story of a young African American. I mean, you didn't even grow up in Oakland. You grew up in a nice little fucking nice neighborhood. You never touched the inner city ever in his life. You never touched Oakland, period. You know, and he had to be in the house when the fucking street lights went out. What the fuck? He didn't do anything. You know, please. I started drink, start drinking beer. What'd you do? Drink a wine cooler, Andre? No, but it pissed me off that they fucking could do that to Roman. Rob Roman, the guy who did everything the right way, did everything everyone asked of him. Tr treat him this way to where no one's ever beaten him. No one's ever beaten him. Ever. Ever. He's never had a bullshit decision. Nothing. Nothing. No one's ever beaten him. And if you think Quadras beat him, fuck off. You're a fucking idiot. That was one of the easiest fights to score. He beat the shit out of Quadras. You just don't like Roman. Correct? Correct. Bye. Um, now, this motherfucker did everything the right way, came up the hard way, you know, made his bones so much, he gave so much to the sport, and this is how boxing repays him, and, re and then Andre Ward reaps all the benefits, a guy who was the exact opposite of Roman, came up the exact opposite, you have the real hard knock life story, and you have the made by Grant and the amateurs maneuvered through amateur tournaments so you wouldn't lose because you're not that good. And we can get you to the Olympics and we'll rob a bunch of guys till you can get gold. And that's what they did. They robbed four guys and he gets gold. Um, <laughs> then they turn them pro, go build a, make them fight absolutely nobody, build a tournament and allow him to go in and do anything he wants in the tournament any foul they will not call it and every fight is in his backyard and again they do not call any foul he does um, and somehow he wins that tournament can you believe that when everyone else had to fight all over the road and they all lost on the road but Ward never went on the road ain't that weird like how, how that happened uh, the best super middleweight in the world Andre or er, er, uh, Butte was not allowed in the tournament even though he asked a million times because as the creator Hirschman of the tournament said because he was too good he might actually beat Andre I wanted to create a tournament that I knew Andre could win I wanted to create my own Floyd Mayweather that's what he wanted. The next thing. You know, the next Floyd Mayweather is what he wanted. So he was starting ahead of time, you know. And uh, he was working on it. So he probably talked to Team Ward. Do you think you can beat this guy? you think you can be beat this guy? If you can't beat uh, Frotch, who throws his left hooks like this. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> His left leg to the body. He go. Ah, ah, it looks so gay. Even his left hook to the head. He'll go. Ah, like it's like, oh god, Telegraph City. Hello, can you ever? How are you gonna land that? Butte was just. Ward should have been disqualified. Uh, that's for damn sure. Um, plus, he should have had six points taken away from him, uh, which. Well, two points deducted he drowned. I think that would have actually made... Uh, yeah, I think that would have made... Uh, Kessler the winner. Because every headbutt that causes damage, two points. And I'd probably say the third one is the DQ anyway. So it's DQ. No matter what, you're losing. Um... That's it, you know. I just can't believe they would do the the quintessential perfect fighter so dirty 
and be so heartless and care about them like nothing. I don't know how you can, how these, you know, execs at HBO can sleep at night after what they did to this man and who they did it for. You know, who they did it for. A guy who has had the red carpet treatment his entire career and has always been called pound for pound top when he's not. He's not even a pound for pound fighter. Thurman is way more talented than Andre Ward. Timothy Bradley, way more talented than Andre Ward. Dude, Lamont Peterson is way more talented than Andre Ward. Um, <laughs> the, you think I'm joking. Uh, but Andre Ward got the, the, the gold medal. And the amateurs, oh, and one that super thick, the super thick with all them tomato cans. You know, it's like, get out of here, man. Super Six was a, a fake manufactured tournament that everyone knew what it was for and about. You know, we didn't know at the time, but Hirschman later admitted all this. I'm not making this up. Hirschman admitted it. He cre that tournament was created for Ward to win. As he did. And then he fights Dawson, who he, he left HB, or he left Showtime because he didn't want to fight Butte. They were making him fight Butte, and he didn't want to fight Butte. He thought he would get whooped. He wouldn't even fight Butte in Oakland. Um, so he ran away. Wouldn't fight Butte. Wouldn't fight Darrell. Gave up his WBC belt because he wouldn't fight his Mando. Um, never would fight uh, DeGale. They were supposed to fight. Instead, he fought Edwin fucking Rodriguez. Yeah, some 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 name that turned out to be when you could have had fucking DeGale, uh, who was also a gold medalist. Um, just man, dude's a total scumbag. Total scumbag. Dude has never done anything. Beat a drained is drain drain to death, Dawson. Ooh, so impressive. You sure couldn't beat the hundred and seventy five pound Dawson that Bernard Hopkins had to face and got his face fucking punished for it for stepping in the ring versus that Dawson. That's why you made him come down to 68, ain't it? Because you saw the beating he put on Bernard Hopkins before you were going to fight him. He put the fucking whooping on B-Hop, and you were like, oh, fuck. That's going to be me. You know, this guy's big range. He's going to fuck me up. And he would have. And he would have, just like Kovalev. He would have probably knocked your ass out, actually. I really do. I think he would have knocked you the fuck out. Um, I think he would have threw more punches and Kovalev would have been knocked you out. Uh, so you drained him down. And yeah, of course, then you can knock him out because he has no fluid around his brain. Big win. I think it's the worst win you ever had. Um, even worse than fucking putting pop Paul Smith, uh, which was a joke. Uh, what? Then Barrera, um, Nothing good. A decent win. That's it. Um, not a good one. Decent. Not even a... Oh, there's decent, okay, good, very good, great. Um, and then levels after that. But then... What? Brand. And then gets what? by the only A-level fighter he ever fought. The only A-level fighter he ever fought. He gets murdered by. Humiliated by. But then they rob him. And, you know, say, you know, oh, and then all of a sudden the narrative becomes, oh, the, the cards were, the, uh, the, the, the rounds were close. The rounds were close. My ass, they were fucking close. I watched the fight. They were not close, okay? 
and neither were Romans. How can they treat these fighters like this? Now, Roman, if this was like uh, Max brought this up, so if this was like Kovalev, right? Like when Kovalev got robbed, he uh, <clears throat> lost out on some money for sure. He lost out on a couple of mil. But he's had multi million dollar paydays a few times before. He's had multi-million dollar paydays several times put it this way he's not hurting for money he probably got over 10 mil in the bank right now roman has never had a one million dollar payday ever i don't think he's ever made six hundred thousand bucks i think the most he ever made was five hundred thousand uh, dollars for a few fights when he was fighting over in japan um at one time but i think five hundred thousand was the most he ever made for one fight uh and you gotta pay taxes on that, you know, and, and all kinds of shit. You out of five hundred grand, you're probably clearing, you know, take home like take home, take home, even after taxes and everything, out of a five hundred dollar fight. He's probably hmm, probably lucky if he sees one hundred and twenty five k. Out of it. The fuck is that gonna do? That's why he fought so god so 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 much. Stayed so busy, constantly fighting. You know, and now he 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 was just asking HBO, dude, look, look, man, I've earned. Look what I have became. Can I please get the fruits of my labor now, man? Please. And they said, we'll see. We'll see after this fight. Uh, and then, fuck them. And now, when he goes to the table, they're going to say, Well, you lost your last one. But we're going to give you... We're going to be nice and give you 280000 for this fight. I mean, total scumbags. Total fucking scumbags, man. I mean, it's just disgusting. It, it, it pisses me off that they would do Roman dirty like that, uh, period. But it really pisses me off that they would do it for someone as low down and scandalous and just, uh, just scandalous, you know, straight up piece of shit. Ward, a fake Christian, a known liar. A lie, basically an admitted liar. I mean, everything in a book, a cheater. And I'm not even cheating on a, a, a every level. A cheater. <coughs> you know? Why wouldn't what? I mean, who else refuses Vada like he has in the past? So, all that good stuff. Um, he's a, the worst person in the world to to fuck Roman over for. I mean, it's it's so sad. So sad, man. But let me know how you feel, man. I don't know, boxing talk. Uh, glad to be back. Peace. Give me your thoughts, comments.